Yo, what's up, YouTube? What's going on, everybody? We are back here for another live commentary. And um, y'all have decided for this hype fight, man. I was going to actually get on earlier. I saw a show biz got, got on early. I was watching a little bit of his show. And I was like, damn, I, I, I'm excited for the fight. I'm hyped up, but I don't want to be too tired. It's going to be a long night. I'm covering two different cards tonight. And I was like, I'm going to just wait. I'm waiting out, hanging out, you know, hang out a little bit. I was watching a little bit of the Okoli fight. What's up, Aaron? I see you in the comments. Uh, I saw you, uh, Charles Edward Cheese. I saw you in the comments too earlier. Uh, yeah, David uh, Okoli. Yeah, I didn't watch the whole Okoli fight. I watched some of the Okoli fight. I, I watched some of the fight. I didn't watch the whole thing. Oh, snap. Charles Edward Cheese is in the building. <laughs> I was just talking about Charles. I saw you in there creeping earlier, man. I saw you. <laughs> Yo, thank you for the donation, my man. I appreciate it, man. Great way to start tonight. Yo, I was thinking before I went on live. And what's up, Josh? I see you in there, too. What's good? Yo, I was trying to think, and I actually went back to the boxing schedule for the year, and I was trying to decide what fight was I most excited for going into you know for the year i mean I'm, what what matchup was i most excited for this far this year uh and it's this fight i've been wanting to see this fight since 2019 man so it, it is definitely this fight this fight here is the fight that i'm most excited for so far in uh 2023 i would say the second one was probably um Maybe Tim Zhu and, and Tony Harrison. I know that's like probably a surprising, uh, a surprising one because that there were probably bigger fights this year so far. But I think that fight right there, I was really hyped for too. But this fight, I'm I'm more hyped. I think I'm more hyped about this fight outside of. Oh, I, I would say, uh, I would say Anuwe and Fulton, and probably Haney and Lomachenko. I would probably say those fights. Yeah, I would probably I would I would probably say those fights over um over this one. But this is this is this is up there. This is up there. For some reason, it's an it's not as far from a super fight. It's far from any of that. But for this fight right here, I'm hyped up about this fight. You know, I feel like this fight right here is is, is something big, it's something special. You know. Yeah, I don't I don't even care if you know these guys are not mega famous or anything like that. I know it's a pay-per-view. It probably shouldn't be a pay-per-view, but I don't really care, man. Just watching the build up to this fight, the press conferences, the the weigh-in, you know, the weigh-in was lit. I, I just feel like, man, this feels like a super fight. I get that same feeling that I get from a super fight. Like what when I was watching Floyd or watching Canelo fight and stuff like that. Like I, I get that same feel, like yo, I'm excited. I can't wait. You know, I'm I'm just I'm I'm a little nervous because I'm not even rooting for a particular fighter. I'm just I just I really believe that. I really believe that I believe Benavides is gonna win, but I also feel like I feel like I, if yo if Caleb Player ends up just pulling off the upset. I'm not going to be shocked at all, man. Yo, I seen Caleb Plant at that weigh-in, and he always looked jacked for the fights. He looks in great shape in every fight. He looks fit. I've never seen a guy look sloppy ever. But I feel like, yo, it's something different with him this time. Like, he don't, I don't know. I don't think he ever looked like that built. And, you know, even though Benavides is looking in the best physical shape, I mean, he came in at 166. Plant looked like he's bigger like plant you know and i know benavides is gonna bulk up overnight but i just feel like you can't sleep it's a lot of people really sleeping on caleb plant even if you think benavides is gonna win there's people that just don't think plant has a chance at all and that's like man i don't know man this is a huge 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 step up for uh for for david benavides you know What's good, everybody that's checking in, man? I see you, uh, Dame, uh, Damon. What's up with you? What's up, Arthur? Who else is here? Scott, what's good with you? What's going on? 
Hold on. I'm going to just refresh this page real quick because I... Give me a second. Hold on. Give me give me two seconds, y'all. Hold on. All right, I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, something's something's bugging out with my um. Uh, it's, it's something wrong with this stream you're on site. But what's up, everyone that's coming in, man? John Doe, what's up? Light skin business, what's happening with you? Um. Josh says, we disagree on this one, Wave. He said, I think he's going to walk through plant with ease. He might, man. Yo, if he, I'm going to tell you right now, and I know Canelo's already talking about fighting Bevo later, you know, down the line and in the second half of this year, having that rematch. If Benavides just walks through plant, if he walks through him, Right and beat them even in better fashion. That's all people are going to want to see at this point, and especially because they're two Mexican fighters. That's all people are going to want. I mean, they already been saying that Canelo has ducked this guy, and I don't even believe so. But if he if he if he walks through Caleb Plant, you know, I I know I know Bevo is 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 pound for pound and all that. But no one's gonna, no one's gonna care about that fight. They're not gonna care. Everybody's gonna be talking about Benavides. What's up, Watts Lope? Oh, uh, so the main fights. So tonight we got the ESPN card, which is uh. By the way, both both cards got the pre fights before the main cards on right now. So if you have YouTube, of course you have YouTube because you're watching me on here. On YouTube, Showtime, on their actual channel, YouTube channel, they're having the, the earlier fights, the pre-fights before the main card. And then on ESPN, they already have fights for the Komei uh, Ramirez fight. So I have both of them on sim simultaneously right now. I'm only covering the Komei uh, Ramirez fight when that comes on. All right, But I'm going to have that on at the same time whatever showing on showtime now showtime i believe have the bit the better on the card um you you got chris colbert against jose Venezuela. that is the co-main event i believe that's going to be on the other card of the showtime the pay-per-view uh you got jesus uh, ramos against joey spencer which is a great fight too both undefeated um, to be honest, man, that should be the co I mean, event. I mean, this is a step up fight for both of them, and they're both undefeated on a low. That's that's a great matchup. You got Jesus Jesus Ramos, who's big pressure fighter at one fifty four, and he's gonna be. I think, or is this, is this gonna be at one sixty? Because I think Joey, I'm not sure. I think no, Joey Spencer fights at one fifty four. He usually fights at a catchway right above one fifty four. That's gonna be a good fight. You got the pressure fighter and Ramos, big for the weight. And you got the boxer, Joey Spencer. That's going to be a good fight. You know, that low key, that that's going to be like, that's like a mini plant Benavides on the low. That's a good fight. And then you got Cody Crowley fighting Abel Ramos. So you, you got a, you got a pretty good undercard on the, uh, on the Showtime pay-per-view. You know I mean? It's a pay-per-view. I know. None of us want to pay for these, but at the end of the day, it's not a bad pay per view at all. I mean, for an undercard, is is worth it. Like, I'm not complaining about this pay per view. You know, what's up, Conan? What's up with you? What's up, Ralph? I see you. Shadow Combat. What's up? Yeah. So I mean, I want to see. I want to see. You know, not for nothing. I've been. I've been asking. I'm not saying Benavides fought the best fighters or anything, but I've been wanting to see Canelo fight Benavides only because Benavides was a champion. I know he lost those belts, you know, due due to dr the drugs and the, uh, on a scale. But I still always wanted to see the fight, you know. But he screwed that situation up because he wasn't champion when Canelo fought for them belts. You know what I'm saying? But we'll see. 
Aaron, Aaron, what's up with you, man? Thank you for the donation. He says, yo, Wave, late request, but can you give a shout out to Wayne Shorter on the GOATs? Uh, one of the GOATs. One of the GOATs, RIP. Yeah, quick shout out to uh, Wayne Shorter. All right, rest in peace to him. All right. Um, and thank you, bro, for the donation. I seen your um I seen your uh your comments earlier. I didn't watch the Lawrence O'Coley fight, man. Uh, I watched a little bit of it. I want to say two rounds tops. It really wasn't much going on. So I didn't I didn't stay on it. You know what I'm saying? I just I, I just wasn't gonna, you know, I just wasn't gonna stay on it. You know, it is what it is. You know, I just wasn't gonna do it. All right, but um Nah, I'm just, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, no problem. Shadow Combat says, Spencer is a hype job. Jesus Ramos wins. Abel Ramos will be fighting Crowley yet. Ramos is coming off a long layoff. I think Crowley going to beat Ramos. Um, I'm leaning towards Spencer. But I feel you on him being a hype job. I've been waiting for him to fight somebody real all fight all all his career. It's just that I, I I'm leaning towards him simply because um I didn't really like how uh, Ramos looked in his last fight. I really he didn't really look that impressive to me, you know. Um, but we'll see. We'll see later, you know. I mean, but yeah, I'm I, I'm with you with Spencer on a little bit. I was kind of I kind of been feeling like why are they taking so long to put joey spencer in there with a real fighter they've been making it seem like he's a, a prospect he hasn't been a prospect to me for a while you know so um i'm just been wait waiting for them to step him up you know so it is what it is we'll see what's up rotors what's good with you man um I didn't watch a whole Coley fight, but I can say that, you know, I only watched a couple rounds, but I, I'm going to say that it, it wasn't good what I was seeing. You know, I mean, David Light didn't really have much for him. And I thought a Coley should have pushed harder, you know, and it just seems like a Coley, you know, what Coley really needs to work on. He needs to work on his inside game. You know, and I don't know if it's because he doesn't got it. I, I think it might be a mental thing, you know. Um, he needs to work on his inside game. Like, you know, he needs to learn how to – he either need to learn or he needs to get the confidence and, 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 and be comfortable enough to sit in a pocket. You know what I'm saying? Because that range fighting, finding lead hand, shooting the right hand, is, is only going to go for so far. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody's going to get hit with that same right hand. You're going to have to find other ways to make adjustments and stuff like that. Because I like him, but, you know, I think at some point, like, yo, you got to have to step it up. And not because, even if he continues to win, you know, people are just not going to respect your game because, you're not looking impressive winning. You're winning, and you have looked impressive, but it seems like it, it's based on the specific opponent. you know. And I know that not everybody looks great in every fight, but you have a reputation of being a guy involved in messy fights, and you don't want to continue that. And then the reports are already saying that tonight. you know. So it kind of reminds me of Guillermo Rigondeaux, you know. It reminds me of him because... It seems like whenever Guillermo Rigonal didn't knock out guys in early rounds, it seemed like the fights were always boring, you know? And that's what people used to say about him all the time. That's what Bob Arum started when he was being promoted by Bob Arum. It seemed like that was the reputation of Guillermo Rigonal. It's like people loved him because of the sweet science and all that. But at the same time, and, and no, and by no means I'm am I directly comparing Guillermo Rigonal to Lawrence Acoli. Okay. But what I'm saying is he had a reputation of being boring. You know, and I think with Acoli, yeah, even if you are winning the fights, it's like, yeah, you're winning, but 
no one's going to respect you if if these fights keep ending this way, like these messy hold fests where, you know, you got to really work on his inside game. Um, but I do want him to unify. I mean, the thing is, he's been calling out some of the best. You know, I know this past year has been messy because of Eddie Hearn, but I do want to see him fight uh, Opataya. I still want to see him fight uh, Maris Breedis still. You know, I would still love this, even with Breedis losing, um to Opataya, I would I still want to see that fight. Um, I'm still interested in Makabu. Uh, I would like to see the bottle jack fight. Any of those fights are still cool with me. You know, it's not like when the fighters lose, I'm done. All of those fights are still, I just want to see him fight against top two, top, top dudes if he's not going to unify, you know, either unify or fight another top dude. Mark, Mark, Mark says, um, Sugar Hill kept telling Akoli to go to the body more. Akoli just ignored him and kept holding. Like, uh, he's pretty one dimensional, to be honest. And this is what I mean. You know, this is what I mean. And, 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 and if your coach is telling you that, your coach is probably telling you that because he knows you have the ability to do so. He's not going to tell you something that he doesn't think you can do, you know, and not, not a coach on that level. So I feel like if Sugar Hill is telling you that in your corner and you're not listening, then it might be a mental thing. He might not be comfortable with doing that, you know? And I think he needs to work on, on breaking out of that, you know? Just my opinion. I like him, though. I want to see him to win. I want. I really want to see him win, but I would like him to break out of what you don't don't be that one dimensional guy because right now people believe you are, you know. And when the fights get a little rough and physical, it becomes a whole fest, and then you go back to doing what you normally do. You know what I'm saying? And, and Shadow, I agree with you, man. Opatai and Breeders should fight again. You know, Breeders just gave two way too many rounds away early. You know, I remember watching that. I don't, I don't know if I was live doing live commentary. I might have. But he gave way too many rounds away, you know, way too many. And he he finished off really, really, really strong, you know, um, in the breaking up Jai's uh, jaw, you know. But um, that was a great fight, by the way. That was a great fight. Yeah. So, yo, let's talk about it, man. How many people we got? Yo, make sure everybody that's here, please, everybody, let's get the 40 likes, man. Let's get these likes up, man. Um, Let's talk about this fight tonight. What happens if Caleb Plant wins the fight? Whether it's by knockout, whether it's by decision. Do you guys want to see a Canelo rematch? What happens with that? You know, to be honest, I don't want to see a Canelo rematch. But if Plant wins this fight and he looks impressive doing it, like if whatever he's working on, like if he's able to hurt, maybe not stop Benavides, but if he is at least to hurt him, I'm going to feel that he's improved. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm on the... um. I'm on my tequila tonight, man. I'm on my tequila tonight, man. I'm on my tequila. Yeah. I'm on my tequila tonight. I I love tequila, man. I think tequila has broke my uh I think tequila is my number one and uh whiskey is my number two now. Cause I've been drinking more tequila the past couple years over um on whiskey. You know, but those those are my one and twos. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Going back to what I was saying, um, you know, there's still Charlo. You know, I seen Charlo making his rounds again, which is good. It's good that he's starting to be back outside. He's doing interviews. He's saying he's going to return this summer. That's cool. Um, but you know, before we even put him in those conversations, I kind of want him to get back in the mix. Cause he's, it's going to be two years now and, you know, he didn't look that great in his last fight. So, you know, with all that being said, uh, 
I don't really want to have that conversation on him fighting the top guys, you know, because at the end of the day, I know for a fact that whoever he ends up fighting in July is not going to be the people that we're bringing up right now. You know, I want to see if he's strong, like not physically, but mentally, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if he's all there right now. You know, the way he's talking in these interviews, and like I said, it's good to see him back outside, but he seems to be different right now. You know, he seems to be different. I know he's going through a lot of personal stuff. So I just hope that, you know, he gets his stuff back in order. But as far as plan, if it's not Canelo, um, if it's not Canelo, I would say, I would say Andrade, you know, um, Dave Morrell, you know, um, I want to see Canelo against Dave Morrell. You know, I want to see Canelo with the, the, the Dave Morrell because I believe the, Dave Morrell is already the WBA world champion. And Canelo's a super champion. So I would like to see Dave Morrell. And I know the, Dave don't got a lot of fights. But um, if the WBA has already made him the world champion and Canelo's out here fighting his mandos like fighting John Ryder, I would like to see him fight Dave Morrell. You know what I'm saying? Like real talk. If you're gonna fight, if you're gonna fight John Ryder because you're, he's your man, though, make sure you fight Dave Morrell too because he's your man, though. You know. Um, I always gonna want to see the Andre fight. You know. Um, but if if Andre is not available, I would love him to fight Caleb Plant. That'd be good. You know. Yeah, Monroe, thank you, man. Yeah, um, I was sick the entire... I think that was the longest I've ever been sick in my life. Um, And I wasn't sick the whole time. I think I had a relapse because, you know, the weather in New York is like, it's been tricky. And when I came back from my trip in Europe and I got sick, once I started feeling better, I started going back outside and going to work and doing everything normal. And then I got sick again. I had a relapse and then I was sick for a couple, few more weeks, you know, but I feel like, like many people, I feel like a lot of people or, or many people that ever had COVID at some point, I feel like when you catch a cold or you get a flu or anything that's similar to that, I feel like it's different now. Like you don't you normally get sick and you just go, it goes away in a few days or you take some medicine. It feels a little different, you know? I think that's the problem. Yeah, but thank you, man, and thanks for the shout-out. I appreciate that. Brian says, isn't Andre like 40? No, I believe Andre is like 35. That's a big difference, man. All right? Um, There's a lot of fighters that's 35 right now. I don't think 35 is really that old, to be honest. You know, Crawford is 35. I think there's a lot of fighters that's still like around that age, you know? All right. Conan said he's going to have two fights with the PBC. The winner of Plant Benavides and the winner of Morel Andre. All right. We'll just go wait and see. You know? Yeah, I don't I don't know what Andre is gonna do because Andre, if we're gonna be honest about Demetrius Andre, man. No one, unless they're on a come up, like maybe David Morel Jr. None of these guys are going to voluntarily fight him. You feel me? It's, they're not going to voluntarily fight him. Andre has to be in position because even when he had a title, no one really fought him. No one cared to fight him. So now that he doesn't have one, no one's really going to care to fight you down either. You know, unless you start showing your age in your next fight. You know, people are going to look at you as that you're a risky fighter and there's not much reward there. And if you're fighting guys like DeMond Nicholson and Jason Quigley and all of them. Nobody's going to be care. Nobody's going to care to fight you, man. It is what it is. 
It's not about liking Andrade or disliking Andrade or whether or not I think he's good. I think he's a great fighter. I think he's a great talent. But if you have never really tested yourself and fought someone that was a true threat to you, no one's going to care. I think for Charlo, and when, when it comes to Charlo and Andrade, I think Charlo needs to have his tune-up now. And I think by the end of the year, get the Andre fight going. Because whoever wins that fight will start being in that conversation of possibly a Canelo fight or something else that's good. I think if you guys keep fighting those opponents that you've been facing lately, it's not going to make anyone really truly respect you. You know, and being that they have history and you never fought each other, I think it's just kind of ridiculous. At this point, you might as well do it. You know, I say the same thing about Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua. You know, I mean, their situation ain't the same, but I feel like, yo, at this point, you know, like what's holding you back at this point? Yo, just do it. At this point, just just go for it. You know, like, what are we waiting for? You guys already lost. You've both been knocked out before. Figure it out. <laughs> you know? Figure it out. Yeah, so, um, let me know in the comments. What do you guys feel about Chris Colbert and Jose Valenzuela? What do you guys think about that fight? Who do you guys think is going to win the fight? Um, I said in my video, my breakdown, or my prediction video where I just did quick predictions for every fight this weekend. I said that I'm surprised they're having this fight because both of their careers will be at risk tonight already, and they're both young in their careers. I mean, Chris Colbert is, is obviously further, but Chris Colbert has lost a fight where he was a heavy favorite and he hasn't been a, a, in the ring since, you know? And this was early last year. And Jose Valenzuela, how old is Chris Colbert? Because Chris Colbert has been around for a while. I'm assuming he's like 27. Like, he's not no super young pup. You know, I remember I remember watching I me. Mean, I remember when he was just a little B-hop, you know what I'm saying? I'm assuming Valenzuela is like at least a few years younger. I'm assuming. Um, yeah, Valenzuela is 23. So he's he's a really young dude. Um, yeah, I was gonna put money on this fight, but I'm too unsure. I'm not putting I'm not being bothered with that. You know, I mean Chris Colbert is a slight favorite. Um but I'm just not, I'm not sure, man. I, I pick I, I I said I, I got Chris Colbert winning, but I didn't do any film study. You know, one thing I realized too is Chris Colbert is not that great against South Pauls. You know, when I look at his resume, right? I think it was uh the fight with uh Corrales, right? South Paul fighter. Not a big puncher, but it just wasn't a good performance from Chris Colbert. I mean, he won, but it wasn't until he fought uh, Arboleta, Arboleta, Jaime Arboleta. I remember watching that on live. I forgot what, what card that fight was on somebody's undercard or something like that. But I remember watching that fight. And Chris Colbert looked crazy impressive in that fight, right? And he beat up a, like a power puncher. You know, he outboxed him and beat him up. You know, but then when he went and fought Hector Garcia, another southpaw again, who was better than Corrales, we saw what happened in that fight. He got outworked and outboxed. And even though Chris Colbert switches and it looked really good against Arboleta, I think Arboleta's style was just perfect for him to shine. Even though he was a tough fighter. When I watched the Hector Garcia fight 
and him switching to southpaw, he's clearly not as good as a southpaw as he is orthodox. Like he's good, but orthodox, him being a right, you know, I don't know if he's right handed or left handed, but he's better as an orthodox fighter. And it showed in that fight. You know, what's up, Eric? I see you. Yeah, if you put the money down, I think Venezuela, Venezuela is defense is sus. You know, I mean, he did fight a power punches in that last fight. Uh, but it seemed like every punch that guy threw, Santos, I was watching a little bit of it uh earlier. It seemed like everything that guy punched, everything that guy threw, it landed and it was it was heavy. Even the jabs. It seemed like Valenzuela was getting hurt with jabs. Like everything that was getting, everything that landed on him was just too much. What's up, Clarence? Monroe says, I think if Chris Colbert lose tonight, he would be more affected than Jose Valenzuela. Just because Colbert is more cocky and Jose is more humble. Well, in that sense, yes. In that sense, yes. The problem is, and this is what I said in the video, you know, winning this fight doesn't really necessarily help me the fighter that much. Like, it might give them the confidence in that sense, yes. But to be honest, in the way that they, we saw these fighters lose, Valenzuela getting stopped in the third round, and then Chris Colbert just getting bullied. Ooh, excuse me. Chris Colbert getting bullied. And him basically quitting while in the fight. You know, at some point, I don't know if it was the 10th round or something. Chris Colbert just didn't even fight anymore. He was just in there to survive. You know, and even though Hector Garcia, much respect to him, he's a beast. He's no killer. You know what I'm saying? Chris Colbert even said it himself. He's like, yo, I, I just moved because... I'm not going to sit there and get knocked out. He basically gave up in the fight. He survived in the fight. Now, it might have hurt his spirit, you know what I'm saying, because he is really, really cocky. But at the end of the day, if he beat Jose Valenzuela, you're just beating someone that's still green. You know what I'm saying? Like, you beating someone that... He's not no top tier guy. He was a he was one of the prospects that we were watching. You know what I'm saying? Like he was less than even like Michelle Rivera and those guys. He's technically on the same level, if not even or less, as uh uh what's his name? What's in what's the what's the kid name on top rank? I don't know why I tend to always forget his name. That's with Shakur and them and Crawford. I always forget something about his name just makes me forget all the time. Um, what's 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 the one thirty five the, the Olympian? I I can't. I always forget his name for some reason. Let me know in the comments. Anyway. If you beat Jose Valenzuela and able to come back, it doesn't mean that you're top tier. Keyshawn, thank you. Thank you, Rocket. Keyshawn Davis. Keyshawn, <laughs> Jamel Herring. Keyshawn, Keyshawn Davis and Jose Valenzuela was is around the same area. You know what I'm saying? So him losing that fight, you know, we still, like, are kind of not really sure. You know, we're not really, really sure where their career is going to be at because they're prospects. Whereas Chris Colbert was already the WBA world champion. You know, now he, did, he, he was able to do that without fighting any top-tier fighters, you know. He didn't fight Michelle Barrera. He didn't fight Frank Martin. You know, he didn't fight any guy that was really, you know, he, he didn't fight William Cepeda. You know what I'm saying? He didn't fight any of those guys. So even if he beat 
Jose tonight, it's like, yo, I'm still unsure how good you really are. And if Jose ends up winning tonight, I honestly feel it's the same thing with him. You know, because Chris Cooper got exposed in his last fight. So if you beat him again, all you're proving to us and the world is that Chris Cooper was never really that good. He just talked a good game. He was never really that good to begin with. So Jose Venezuela beat him. And if they step him up in the very next fight, he might get stopped again, depending on who they put him up against. You know, and in a sense, I think it's kind of dangerous for both, man. I don't think it's great for both because win or lose, I mean, obviously losing is worse. But if you win, it'll give you a, it'll be a confidence booster. It'll definitely be the best win in both of their careers. But it doesn't tell the full story neither because both of these guys now, we don't really know where they're at in the game. You know? What's up, Focus? Red says, I feel like the De Los Santos is going to be a serious threat in the lightweight division. Dude has a, ver a vicious style. I feel you, and you might be right. I'm not even trying to, I'm not even trying to debate you. You might be right. But you know what? Guys that have a little bit better chin, better boxing, because Jose Velazuela just showed us that night that his head is dead center. And he's not, he don't have the greatest chin, right? He showed us that in his last fight. You know, if you look at the fight, Ramos, I mean, I'm sorry, Santos, whatever he was throwing was landing. Even the jab was hurting this dude. He might be a beast, but as soon as he get in there with a top tier lightweight, they might shut him down. You got to remember, Santos got dropped in that fight too. I think in the second round, he got dropped too. You know, so he might be a threat because he clearly has punching power. I think he knocked like everybody out that he fought. It's that one dude. So he might be a threat or he might not be. You know, he might just have beat a a, a, a prospect that we all thought was going to be the next big thing. What's up, Punch Perfect, man? What's good with you, man? It's my guy right there, man. Make sure you guys uh, subscribe to my man, Punch Perfect. Boxing. You gonna stay up late for this, man? Because it's it's uh it's almost two in the morning for y'all. It's almost two. So it's pretty late over there, buddy. Think you need to be getting some sleep. <laughs> Take a nap, put your alarm clock on, wake up, uh uh wake up in a few hours before the main event. Uh but yeah, um, yeah, uh, I didn't even, I didn't, you know, I'm, I didn't even get to read your comments that you left on that fight. I mean, I am curious to see who you guys got winning the fight. What do you guys got, Brian's got Colbert, Rotor's got Colbert in the six. Eric said he got Velazella. Bill says he thinks uh, Cobra gets clipped. Okay. All right. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, he's staying up? All right. Got you. Uh, all my predictions for tonight, I'm, I'm still going to stick with Cobra. I do think it's 50-50, though. The thing is with Cobra... I don't necessarily think that if Jose wins tonight, that it'll be by knockout. You know, I don't think it'll be by knockout. It, it might not be by knockout. Um, I think Colbert, it, it, it can possibly lose on the cards too. You know, I think both fighters can win both ways. Um, but I'm leaning towards Colbert. I'm going to lean, I'm going to edge it for Spencer. That's another fight that I feel is 50-50 with Spencer and Ramos. I'm edging for Spencer to win by decision, right? Going to be a tough fight for him. Um, he might possibly lose, but I, I'm edging it for Spencer. And the uh, Crowley fight, I got Crowley beating Ramos. 
and and and, and outpointing him in a unanimous decision. I got Crowley winning that one. Ramos hasn't looked good. He hasn't looked great lately. So I got that. All right. These fights are later. The pay-per-view starts in 20 minutes. Um, but YouTube is showing some undercard, some pre-fights on the Showtime card. And ESPN is showing some undercard fights as well. All right. Yo, did you guys see the fight the other night, though? Between Mbilly and uh, Gongora. Did you guys watch that fight? That was a good fight, man. That was a very, very good fight. I wish I could have gone live that night to watch that. That was a very, very, very good, good, good fight. You know, and that was a fight originally because I had no time to do any way. Uh, I, I didn't do no film study for anybody this week except Plant and Benavides. But, you know, I had originally had Gungor winning, okay, before I made any content. I don't go gore just based on what he did in the Ali Akhmadol fight. I thought he was going to deal with the pressure of Mbilly and, and, and hurt him and stop him similar. And there was moments in the fight it looked like that because Mbilly was able to hurt him in the fight. I'm sorry, uh, Gungor was able to hurt him. But, man, Mbilly's gas tank is just too strong, man. I mean, that guy, he has some of the great, you know, for him to be a power puncher, aggressive fighter and not slow down at all man bro that was a good fight man that was a hell of a fight if you missed that fight please look it up it was on espn i think you can watch it on espn plus that fight was a good fight and believe and ends up pulling it off and finishing strong even though he was hurt throughout the fight that was a really really good fight man check that fight out What's up, not me? All right, so, um, yo, before I went live, I had the ESPN, uh, you know, the undercards playing. And there was a point when they interviewed the, the commentators uh, over there on ESPN Top Rank. Tim Bradley, Andre Ward, you know, the other gentleman. And they start talking about Tyson Fury and Usyk. And Tim Bradley went on an epic rant about how this whole thing is all Tyson Fury's fault. He didn't hold no punches at all, even though he works for Top Rank, right? He said on their platform, loud and clear, this is all Tyson Fury's fault. And he ducked Usyk. And he also gave examples of things that Tyson Fury has said in previous interviews about how he didn't, you know, he there was one fight that he was concerned about that he really didn't want to take. You know, he went into all of this stuff. And I'm going to tell you, the body language, including Andre Ward, because Andre Ward did follow up and he tried to defend Fury, but it didn't really sound right. The body language on everybody else that was up on that podium after Tim Bradley went on that rant, it just felt like it was something that was said that was not supposed to be said on that platform because we know that Tyson Fury fights on ESPN top rank. So for them to say that about their biggest star fighter, pretty much, um, it says a lot, man. Um, I went on my Twitter before I went live and I said, yo, I think top rank is going to let him go, you know, and I know he was a top rank guy, you know, I know he's Bob Arum's guy, you know, um, but I don't feel like that was supposed to be said at all and not in the way he said it, you know, he said it in a way like he said it like a, like a, a, a content creator, like myself said it, like someone that has no ties to the, the, the boxing, uh, industry. Like, I don't have no direct ties to the industry. I think he said it in a way like I would say it or somebody on YouTube would say it or somebody on Twitter would say it, you know? And I, I was very shocked. I mean, he went hard. And the way the, the rest of them was like scratching their nose, looking looking away like, yo, I, I don't think any of them expected Tim to say that like that. 
Now, I don't know if that's going to be the thing that's going to be to let him go, but I'm sure he's going to hear about it after this fight is over. After this night, is so somebody's going to say something because you just can't say that about your fighters. And I'm, I'm not talking about this ESPN top rank. I'm talking about anywhere. You go on any other platform and talk like that about one of their top fighters, you can't go on, you know, Sky or, 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 or Showtime or you know the zone or wherever it is you're gonna go and talk about their fighter like that and i'm glad he did it i'm glad he had the courage to be real like that because i think that's what this is why people don't respect the commentary on on these shows because now you have the internet you have people that create content like us and people just want to hear what we all talk about like as fans you know, it was an epic rant. If you're just joining in, Tim Bradley made an epic rant about Tyson Fury ducking Usyk and about how this whole fight fell apart. And he said it in a way where, in a way where he was very, very direct. He gave examples. He talked about details on why was going, you know, leading up to the fight. Things that Fury had said in the past interviews. He said it like he's been following this his whole, you know, this whole period. You know, he said it like a, a YouTuber that's been following all of the news leading up to the, all the articles. He said it in a way where he was well informed. Because, no, you know, most of the commentary sometimes, you know, as, as experienced, they might have, you know, uh, legendary boxers up there. Sometimes they just not in tune with what's going on with, uh, you know, some of these fight, fighters' careers. No, he said it. He was very direct. And he raised his voice and he looked at the camera and he said, Tyson Fury, you ducked Usyk. This is all your fault. And he said, yada, yada, yada. And he gave examples and he said all of that. And I said, wow, I'm surprised Tim said that on air like that. And when Andre Ward tried to follow him up, he's like, yeah, you know, well, I wouldn't say, you know, it's all his fault, you know, because I don't think he's scared. You know, Dre tried to go into the whole, I don't think Fury is scared of him. You know, I think, you know, if you end up taking the three fights with Wilder, you're not really scared. Man, Tim turned and looked at him like, Dre, you serious? Like, it felt like, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I, I felt like the way Tim had turned and looked at Dre, he said it in a way like, bro, we talk about this all the time. Don't sit up here and try to be different. Like, that's the way he looked at Andre Ward. <laughs> that was the way he looked at him tonight. He was just like, bro, you serious? Like, come on, bro. We talk about this every day. <laughs> you know, that's the way he did it. And I might be wrong. I don't know. I don't know. I've never met Tim Bradley. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know if that's true. But what I'm saying is that was pretty intense earlier tonight. You know? Bradley said what the fans said said what the fans think. Yeah, Bradley is pretty outspoken. And even if you don't agree, I don't always agree with anybody. <laughs> you know, but I like when you're being honest. I don't like when people try to shut people down from saying how they talking about so, saying what they feel. You know, speak what you feel without and that's why I know, I've always said to you guys, I, I never would want a relationship with like any of these fighters like that, not a close one at least, because I want to be able to say how I feel without being having concern about how they may feel about my comments. I want to be able to have that freedom to say what I want to say when I want to say it. You know, um, people ask me all the time, like, you know, would I work for a network or something, do something like, you know, some of the YouTubers that have made it to that level. Would I work for a network? And I'm saying, you know, no, I, I would work for a network, but I still want to be able to continue saying what I like to say on here. You know, I might rant every once in a blue, but I, I don't really go into being disrespectful. But I'm going to tell you how I feel. I don't want to be a I don't want to be a company man. You know, I don't I, I would never want to lose that freedom of being able to say what I want to say on here. You know, because it's writers that I love and I support. But I love being able to say what I want about them. 
You know, I don't have no ties with you. You know, but I feel that about Tim. But I don't always agree with Tim. But I don't always agree with anyone that's that's on there, on on anywhere. You know, if you have a YouTube channel, I might love you. Might be my favorite, one of my favorite channels. But we're gonna disagree from every now and then. You're gonna disagree with me. I'm gonna disagree with you, and we could respectfully argue about it, or we can just move on, and you could go your way, and I could go my way. You know, but yeah, man, nah. I, I like I was really uh I really like what Tim said. You know? But as far as that fight is concerned, and you know, and they're saying that at this point, to be honest, man, they're now trying to say that Joe Joyce is gonna be the front runner for Fury's next fight. So if, if, if Joe Joyce wins his, his next fight, which is oh, uh, it's it's gonna be a few weeks from now, you know, in April. They're saying if he beats Zile Zhang, that he's going to fight Joe Joyce. I'm going to be honest with you guys. As much as of a, of a fight that is, you know, and I'm still going to be upset that the Usu fight didn't go down, but that's a very good fight. I don't even believe it no more. You know, I don't even believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe anything that Camp is saying until they actually do it. I don't believe Tyson Fury until he's in the ring. All right. I never really believed him much anyway because Fury always was hypocritical. You know what I'm saying? If he had all these mental issues, if he's retired on and off, he's, you know, he's asked for half a billion dollars for fights. He's been unrealistic every day for the for the the, the last seven or eight years that, you know straight i can't believe anything he said nicholas thank you for the donation he says plant is gonna have benavides looking sleepy wow all right we gotta wait and see you gotta wait and see you know i, I seem to I actually um i pissed a lot of the uh, benavides fans off this week with my breakdown you know they seem to not like my breakdown they think that i was too harsh on his calling out his flaws you know they didn't care that i picked him i think he's gonna win they didn't like the fact that i i, I exposed his flaws very well they didn't like that so a lot of them started leaving uh, all these kind of nasty comments in, in my video. I had to block at least six or seven people. You know, now normally if it's one, if it's one or two guys, what's up, Young Hollywood? I see you. If it's one or two comments, I'll leave them there and let the supporters of the channel eat them up. But it was, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. And um. You know, the way I look at it, not that I have to explain myself, but when I do my breakdowns, right, and they were really racist comments, really racist. It was all race-related comments, you know. Some of them was just like regular nasty comments like, yo, you don't know shit about boxing, yada, yada. Benavides is going to put him to sleep. Cool. That's fine. But some of them were really nasty. And my whole thing is, Benavides is the favorite to win, right? He's a solid, strong favorite to win. So what I'm trying to do here is being that most people think Benavides is going to win this fight and most people don't believe that Plant is going to be able to fight long enough, you know, to pull off the win because of Benavides' pressure and all that. I'm trying to give you another option, another way to look at the fight. We already know what Benavides does well. But we want to look at what exactly his flaws, his flaws are, right? Because this fight here is the first fight that anyone has felt that he may lose. See, Plan already had fights where you're not sure. Canelo. You're not really sure. You know, even the Uzkategi fight. The Uzkategi fight was a step up for Plant. We don't care about it now because we already saw what happened. But 
at that time, Uskategi probably had a better resume than Caleb Plant. I'm, I'm being dead serious. He probably had a better resume than Caleb Plant. Just stopping a Darrell brother, he had a better resume than Caleb Plant. With that being said, we want to break down this guy's flaws. Why? Because it's never been done on his channel. Because Benavides has never fought anyone that felt like would give him comp. The first time I ever even done a breakdown on a Benavides fight was against David Lemieux. And we all knew what was going to happen in that fight. There was nothing to break down. So what are, what are people coming on here being on? Yeah, yeah, and I know it's not y'all. It's a bunch of people that's probably not even subscribed to my channel. But they come in here talking crazy, and I'm like, are you listening to what I'm saying? Even if you disagree with me, well, you don't disagree with me because you think Benavides is going to win like I think he's going to win. But you don't like that I'm bringing up his flaws. The reason why I'm bringing it up, because I think if a fighter, a fighter good enough may be able to expose these flaws. And I'm pointing them out. Just like other channels are uh, Punch Perfect Boxing. He's a he's a breakdown channel. He did a breakdown video. He exposed his flaws. Just like uh my man Pox and Gems. He does film study. He exposed all these flaws too and more. Anybody that sees David have seen these flaws. Anybody that knows anything, they've seen the flaws. You know, but people don't want that. You know, they want that's a problem. It's like the NBA. I always, I always reference the the NBA when I talk boxing because I, I watch the NBA. The NBA is no more like it's not a team. It's a team sport, but everybody are just extreme fans for certain players. There's no extreme fans of teams like that. And with this sport, even though this is an individual sport. People don't love the sport. They are extreme fans for specific fighters. Right? For specific fighters. Or a specific group of fighters. Or they're extreme fans of just certain networks that have like, you know, you know all that shit with the politics. Like, you on this side or you on this side? Like, what side? You got to pick a side. We team PBC or we team Matchroom or we team, you know, like, it's, it's that shit. It's weird shit going on on here. You know, so if you talk about David Benavides, if you think you would win, you know what they want to hear from my channel? Yo, you know what? This is my breakdown right here. David Benavides, Kayla Plant, fight March 25th. And this is going to be for the WBC, WBC interim title. And I think Benavides is going to run through Kalen Plant because he's too big. He's too strong. You know, he boxes way too good. Kalen Plant has no power at all. He's already been stopped by Canelo Alvarez. He got nothing, but he can't, he's going to just try to run. He has nothing for Benavides. And Benavides is going to stop him within five or six rounds. That's the kind of breakdown they want to hear. Nothing else. So if you're not saying that shit, they dropping a bunch of M-bombs and this, that, the third. They leaving monkey emojis and all this stupid shit. What's going on? It's crazy. And it's no diss to the Mexican community because I got a lot of y'all that, that subscribe to me. Y'all show love every time I make videos. Y'all here? I'm not singling y'all out because when it comes to racism, it comes in this. It comes in different direct. It comes from all directions. When it happens, it doesn't happen often on my channel, at least, because most people when they disagree with me. They just say, like, you know what? I disagree with you, but, you know, I hear where you're coming from. You know what I'm saying? It's like that. It's not really nothing crazy. But every once in a while, you get a group. It could be from the, uh, the, 
the Filipino community. It could be from the Mexican community. It could be, you know, it could be from whatever community, you know, of people. It could even be from the black community. You know, if you don't pick the black fighter, they'll start dissing you because you're black and you, they feel like you're supposed to pick the black fighter. But it's not about who I want to win. It's about who I believe is going to win. That's the point of doing a breakdown. I'm trying to break the fight down or as I see it going, not how I feel it goes based on my bias towards the fire. Because I have biases like everybody else do. We all got the biases. Like, I have it too. I'm biased towards fighters. But, like, come on. Like, yo, especially, like, a lot of y'all are gamblers. You think I'm going to pick the black? I, if I bet against, if, if I bet black in Tony Harris and Tim Sue fight, I would have lost my money. You get what I'm saying? It's like, yo, I like you. I want you to win. I want Tim Tony Harrison to win. But I clearly don't, I don't think he's going to win the fight. So I'm picking the guy I think is going to win. Ain't nothing personal. You're not my man. We didn't grow up together. I've never met you in my life. What are we doing? So it goes, it goes, it goes full circle with everybody. And some people can't handle. You know, truth talk. They just handle like your feelings, your emotions. This is what you're supposed to do. This is what you're supposed to say. I ain't like, nah, I have never been a follower ever in my life. <laughs> I don't care if I'm the only one that's standing in, in, in a specific corner. If I don't agree with y'all, I'm going with how I think the fight is going to go. I'm not going with what you want me to go with. Like, that's crazy. Crazy. DeMont says a uh, blood boxing brought it up in the chat last week saying in the beginning of YouTube boxing, it was really, it was really, really racist. So let me speak on that. I'm an OG on YouTube. I am. But when I got on, I want to say it started, I want to say I went a good three to six months without interacting with any other channels. When I started interacting with other channels, I was interacting with D-Style, Blood Boxing, 78 Sports, and a few others, uh, uh, Boxing Beats and Rhymes, you know, whoever was there at the time. The Wire, I was I was always watching, like, I love The Wire joints, and a few others. When I listen to their old video and some of the people that's not here no more, they said that there was this whole race thing going on between their channels and other channels. I wasn't here for that. I missed that. But even if I if I was here for that, I mean, even if I was around, I wouldn't have been, I don't get involved in that. You know, because at the end of the day, and I love all these channels, at the end of the day, I'm here for me. No one from YouTube may motivated me to 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 make videos. The only person that is that has a, a, a great it influenced me to join YouTube is one of my best best friends who had a YouTube channel. So some of you guys know him as USA MVP because he was making YouTube videos back then. That's one of my personal best friends. And since we talk boxing all the time, he was like telling me, yo, you know mad shit about boxing. Why don't you do a YouTube channel like I do? But I didn't know who any of those, I was never listening to any content creators on YouTube. If I ever went on YouTube to search a fight, I was searching the fight. I never listened to people on YouTube. So I heard about that a long time ago. Um, it re resurfaced. But when I got on YouTube, not none of that was really happening, to be honest. And if it was happening, I wasn't really paying attention. There was a couple of channels, though, that I knew about. That was right on that borderline. And then, you know, once it started really happening and coming out, then it was pretty much open. And I saw everything just fall apart in some in some ways. But, you know, it was a really long time ago. YouTube is a completely different place from what it was 10 years ago. You know, it's 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 different now. Um, The YouTube is big. We have all these options. 
Um, I think the newer channels, it's very easy to grow your channel now because um, it's a lot more people on YouTube. Like boxing videos, their viewership is 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 on a different level. You know, um, I remember it was me and 78 Sports TV and, and Carcino for Life and Blood Boxing. I remember when I hit my first 1K subscribers, I think 78 might have had like 3k uh and, and carcino had like two or 3k and you know everybody was low back then none of us was uh all the smaller channels only had 50 to 200 subscribers but we all knew who they were but the bigger channels only had like one or two k subscribers you know so it was a different time and it was it was different you know Yeah, Carcino just stopped making boxing videos at period. You know, Carcino just started making hip hop videos. And hip hop videos, hip hop videos, you're gonna get tens of thousands more views than a boxing video. You know, anything with hip or well, gaming, gaming is on a different level. Cause if you have a gaming channel, you're gonna get a million subscribers like this. You know, a car channel, a beauty channel, or channels about politics. You're going to get like way more, you know, uh, way more subscribers quicker. But, you know, boxing has been way better. Like, look at the channels. Look at guys like uh, Showbiz, the adult. Showbiz has probably been on for like four or five years now, if that. And he's, you know, him, Blue Blood. You got Boxing Gyms, who's been doing film study videos. He just hit 30K. You know, all of these guys have gone past the older YouTubers like myself. Or, you know, yeah, most of them have gone past us because they're new, they're hot, you know, and they have, you know, the quality. What you could do to, to, to edit and stuff is crazy. You know, you can make your videos, you could do these film studies. Man, you could do some, some great work now, you know, and there's a larger community now. But shout out to all the channels, man. You know me, I, I never disrespect any channels. You know, if I don't have anything good to say about them, I don't bring them up. But if I do, if I do resp respect your channel and your work, I'm always going to bring you up and, uh, and and tell people like, yo, follow this dude or this dude is one of my favorite times. I always give props to every channel that I support because I think the biggest problem with um YouTubers, they put too much attention on the channels they hate. Because the channels they hate, they already know they hate it. So what they're going to do is just keep getting the attention, the feedback. Because just think about it. If you're here and you're watching me, you're watching me because you love my content, right? Because I don't make any clickbait stuff. So if you're following me, you're following me because you just like my channel. If you follow some of these other channels that have way more subscribers, you're following them, A, because you support them or you hate their guts. There are so many YouTube channels that is based on exposing other channels. Their whole community is based on just going to other people's videos and dissing them. So your community don't even like you. They only like the fact that you talk about other channels. And I feel like that's not really helping the community because... You're not even giving no love and props to the channels that are dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the way I look at it. I'm not going to talk about no channel. Some of you guys leave comments. Yo, what do you think about this channel? I'd be like, yeah, I mean, I don't. it's really not for me. That's all I'll say. It's not for me. But I ain't going to be dissing them and all that. Like, nah. Like, I'm not giving them no energy because if I'm talking about them in my videos... I'm drawing y'all to their channel because now you want to go and see what they're talking about for yourself. I'd rather you go to a channel that I support, like, you know, Boxing Beats and Rhymes or D-Style or What's Good Woo. He's in, in the comments, you know, he's here. Um, channels that I actually listen to their stuff. Like, I ain't going to send y'all to some whack channel. And this channels, I think, are terrible. Don't get it twisted. But I ain't going to tell y'all that. <laughs> you know? I ain't going to do it because that's how I am in real life. You know, I don't be... Uh, 
I don't act like that in real life. You know, I don't walk around being disrespectful to people. So I'm definitely not going to act like that on here. All right. So, yo, the main card has started. Uh, Showtime is just showing like a preview of this fight between Benavides and Plant. Um, ESPN is still showing fights. So I, I have both of them up again. The only fight I really plan on covering on ESPN really is the main event, you know, and that really depends on what's showing on Showtime. But I'm going to have it up. Kome and um, Kome and Ramirez. Um, I think Ramirez is actually going to stop Kome. I mean, it could go the distance because Kome is tough. But the problem is with Kome is he fades and he fades hard when he fades, you know. Excuse me. Kome got big power, but once he starts to fade, he fades hard, you know, and he loses that snap, that power. It don't look good, you know, in the later rounds. So I think Ramirez has a chance of getting a stoppage here. He has a chance, um, you know, but, you know, good fighter, but he's had it rough lately. I think somebody left a comment like that earlier. Comey had it rough lately. He's, he's had a rough schedule. You know, let me just pull up, up real quick. It, he's had a rough schedule, you know, and I think I seen him knock out Jackson Marinas. All right, so, yeah, let's look at his schedule here. So he had to draw against Pedraza, which is no surprise because Pedraza boxes better than Comey, but Comey have more power. And, you know, if you don't knock out Pedraza, who's tough, he's lost fights, but he's tough. If you don't knock him out, you're going to have a hard fight with him. You're not going to destroy. You're not going to dominate Pedraza. You know, the only person that really beat Pedraza, really beat him, like beat him and made it look easy or, you know, was Tank. Tank was the only one to do it. But, but Lomachenko struggled a little bit. You know, almost stopped him late, but Loma Chano, it was a tough fight for, for for Loma. You know, it was an easy one. Uh, Zapata, tough fight. You know, Ramirez, Ramirez, who's they both had that fight in common recently. Ramirez had a tough fight. You know, Ramirez had a tough fight with him. And I, I understand that was his first fight back after losing to Josh Taylor. But Ramirez has a tough fight with him. You know, and... um. You know, even Barbosa recently, these Pedraza has never looked easy than anyone. So, Comey, Comey was able to knock out Jackson Marinas, and that was a good knockout. Um, but there's levels of the people he knocks out. There's levels. There's levels, and you when he really, really stepped it up, Tiafima Lopez. We saw he he got he he got put to sleep early. Lomachenko spared him, you know. Lomachenko spared him. Like Lomachenko could have put him out. He spared him, you know. And he had that draw against Pedraza. You know, now you fight Ramirez, who is an aggressive fighter. You know, he's like a bull and a good jab. I think he is the better boxer. You know, unless Comey, Comey definitely got a puncher's chance, but. I think you need a little bit more than a punch's chance to beat Ramirez. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Just my opinion. What's up, XO? No, uh, Ramirez and Kome is going to be later because that's that's uh, that that's gonna that's the last fight on the ESPN card. So it, it, we got a while before that one starts. I have it up on my screen though. I'll let you guys know what's going on. You know, as the fights continue, you know, I have the ESPN one on, but I have it on mute because, you know, I have it's, I have it on my computer and I have the, the plant pay-per-view on the television. All right. So I, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you guys know. Um. Yeah, I see a comment. A uh, AOA says 
He says the Benavides family would be considered racist, though, LOL, being around them. And he also says some of their fans being the one. Well, I don't, I don't change my feelings about fighters based on what they fans say and do. Because if that was the case, I would literally like no fighter. You know what I'm saying? Like boxing, boxing fam extremists that say ridiculous things or throw insults at people because they're in their their feelings. I'm not gonna get mad at the fighter over that. You know, I mean, the amount of insults I got from Manny Pacquiao fans or Canelo fans or Errol Spence fans or Deontay Wilder fans or any fighter that I've said anything or any gave given any kind of criticism on. You know, I mean, I, I'm just not gonna, you know, what I'm saying I'm not gonna just hate the fighter because of something their fans say, like, you know, unless David says something direct that made me feel like he was a racist, I'm not gonna care about what his fans say. I like David Benavides. I do. All I did was break down his flaws that I see him doing in the ring. But as far as Benavides and as far as the way he fights, I like the way he fights. I'm just telling you how Plant can expose him if that is to happen. You know what I'm saying? Black Cat 997 says The Wire is still a great character after all these years. Great channel. Yeah. The Wire is the original breakdown king. Like, the Wire is the original channel that broke down fights. And he's been on here since the beginning of YouTube. The Wire is, is an OG. Like, you know, he's influenced. He's done that breakdown thing better. Not film study, but just talking. He's done that better than everyone. You know, he has all the knowledge and he can pull from fighters in the 60s, the 70s easily like, without a problem. Like, you could tell he grew up, like, really watching that. You know what I'm saying? So, I, much respect to Dwyer. I've learned a lot from him over the years, especially when he talks about, like, older fights and brings up older fighters. You know, shout out to him. Only a few people that can really, really do it as well as him on the YouTube thing, you know? Rhoda says, uh, say the load to your old man. Uh, get him back, Wave. Yeah, I, I'm going to get him back on here, man. I know I always say that, but thanks for shouting him out because he do he do watch all the videos. He watches it all the time, you know. He he watches the channel, so when y'all shout him out, he, he knows y'all shout him out. He's fine, though. He's fine. He's fine. He's chilling. But I'll have him back on here. I'll have him back on here for sure. You know, we used to go to fights together and uh, we'll get on a live right after the fight, you know, or live or do a review of the fight, you know. But he's on here, you know. He's not as much. He's not much. He don't follow uh, boxing as much as he did when he was younger. But, you know, he he still watches some of the fights and stuff. <laughs> Aaron says Dwyer hasn't made a correct prediction in 22 years. Now he's definitely made some right predictions. The problem is, and I don't even want to say it like this, but I think with Dwyer, a lot of his prediction is based on his bets, you know. And I think it influences how he think a fight is gonna go sometimes because he's a he's he's a gambling man first. Like I gamble, but not like him. Like you know, I do it for fun sometimes he do it every weekend <laughs> you can tell like every every prediction he's he he's basing the prediction on the bet and how you can win him he don't make it like where he just telling you how he thinks the fight is gonna go he's telling you on ways to make money you know so i i i you know it, it's a difference You know, he's probably been gambling for years. All right, so um, what else can we talk about, man? 
probably going to talk about this. Uh, you guys know uh, Naoya Inoue and uh, Fulton is uh, postponed. All right, I know a lot of you guys has been asking me, and even some of you guys have reached out to me and said that you, you're in support of me going to Japan to watch the fight. Um, but they are postponing that fight and they're going to reschedule that fight. So I, I don't know when the fight is going to take place now. And that's the problem with, you know, it, traveling for fights. Excuse me. Because I've traveled for fights. But you just don't know what's going to happen. You know, you don't want to travel for a fight. And then, you know, now you got to reschedule the fight. You know, Billy says they say in July. All right, well. I already have some time off. July is my birthday, so, you know, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do. But, you know, that's the problem with having fights. You know, you know, so many fights get canceled or postponed or rescheduled. It's it's a little, you know, it's a little risky when you want to travel for a fight. Make sure everybody, yo, let's get to 100 likes, man. Let's get these likes up, man. I appreciate you guys can smash. Just hit that that thumbs up so we can get some more people in here. You know, but um, you know, that's how that's how I feel about that. What's up, Evander Holy Fields? What's up with you? Uh, but yeah, you know, I think um that's a that's the risk in 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 in, in rescheduling fights. I mean, I mean buying tickets for fights that you have to travel for because you might be taking some time off of work to go that specific weekend. And if they reschedule it, it kind of messes things up, you know, especially with people that, you know, don't really have the money like that. You know, they might not have the money to buy, to pay for a warranty for some of their trip stuff, you know, for the flight or, for the hotel resort you're staying, you know, they, they might not have, they might only can make it that one time period, you know, Ralph, I got Crowley winning. Yeah, but I definitely got to uh, update the wave report on uh, next one. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, I have a list here. Um, some good fights coming up. Michelle Rivera is suspended for six months, by the way. I know I was talking about him earlier. Uh, Michelle Rivera is suspended for that failed drug test. All right, he popped after the uh, Frank Martin loss. All right, he's gonna be fined for uh, he's gonna be fined for ten k, and he's gonna be suspended for six months. All right, um, yeah. Junto Nakatani is fighting Andrew Maloney for that WBO track, and uh, he was supposed to do. Junto was supposed to fight uh, Kyoto Ioka, but now he's going to be fighting Andrew Maloney for the title because Ioka is going to have the rematch, and that's that. Luis Alberto Lopez and Mike Conlon is official. That's a good fight. And Hector Garcia, after losing the tank, he's going to be making uh, his a title defense against Lamont Roach. The WBA just ordered that fight. All right. What's good? Wick said the wire is trying to beat the casino. Yes, that's exactly what he's doing. He's trying to beat the casino. Shout out to the wire, man. Legend. Uh, Red says Frank Martin is definitely up next. Yeah, currently one of my favorites. Yeah. Yes, and he proved that. In a Michelle Rivera fight, he was just a whole different level above Michelle Rivera. But I said to you guys a while ago, and this was kind of when all the stuff was happening with Spence and Bud. And, you know, right away, everybody started talking about Frank Martin and uh, Keyshawn Davis. And I said, you know, I, I kind of think Keyshawn is, he's very, very good. But I think I think Frank Martin is just a little too ahead of him in his pro career right now for them to be fighting. Just my thoughts, you know. Um, Keyshawn looks good, but I think Frank and his experience might be too much for him right now. 
I know Keyshawn looks great. I know he was an Olympian and, and all that. I get it. I'm just saying. I think one had like six, seven professional fights. And the other one has had more fights against better people. Keyshawn probably could beat the same people. You know, he probably could. But I'd rather just wait. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know Spence. I know Bud is beefing and all this stuff with the fights and all the fans. You know, if you team Spence, you you already team Frank Martin. <laughs> You're two completely different people. If you if you if you team Spence, this is what I mean about people, man. I mean, and I'm not dissing y'all that feel that way. If you if you team Bud Crawford, you already team Keyshawn. You know, I, or you team PBC you already. You know, you team top rank. You already you already picking the network guy. I'm telling you, as more of a fan as Bud Crawford, I am over Spence. And I like Spence, too. Shout out to Spence. But I'm a Bud Crawford guy. You know that's my guy. Just because I like Bud Crawford doesn't mean that that's going to influence how I feel about Keyshawn Davis and Frank Martin. That's two totally different dudes. That's just weird to me, man. That's weird. I, I just can't do it. What's up, hybrid? Horker Kane says, uh, I think David Benavides wins this and goes on to beat Canelo. Your thoughts, Wade? Man, I think Benavides wins tonight. I just want to see how he looks when he's if he wins. If he wins. You know what I'm saying? I just want to see how he looks because I think it's 50 50. I want to see how he wins. You know, because he ain't fighting no one ever that's this good. So we'll talk about it after the fight. You know, we'll, we'll just got to wait and see. What's up, Jay Roos? What's good with you? Says who I got, Joyce or Zang. Man, Joyce is going to destroy him. Joyce is going to destroy him. Like, we talking about that? Nah. Zang got a puncher's chance. That's it. I think, uh, I think Joyce got almost every advantage. Honestly, man. I, I this there's not a fight that I've seen from Zhang that made me feel he could beat Joe Joyce. And I know he did well against Hergovic, and that's cool. But nah. Nah. You know, but I think Zhang Zhang and his punches, Zhang can Zang can crack. Right? But everything else, volumes low, stamina's low, low, Joyce's jab, his Relentless attack. And Zane got power. But he's going to be fighting one of the best, most durable fighters that's in the heavyweight division right now. You tell, you mean to tell me not only your, your only chance of winning is a puncher's chance against the guy in the heavyweight division with the best chin. Nah. Still is about to get stopped. I give Zang like five or six rounds. You know what I'm saying? Zang gonna get stopped. That's gonna be done. Keith says, "What up, Way? Hope all is well." What's up, uh, Eric? Man, thank you for the uh, for the donation, man. He says, "Does Plant have enough power to be respected?" I think so. I don't think he's a KO artist. I think he's far from that. But I don't think he's... Yo, people talk like he Pauli Malinaji, right? He dropped Jose Uskategi when they fought. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. Vincent Feigen Boots. Callum Truax. You know, I know he didn't stop them. I get it. I know he couldn't keep Canelo. I get it. 
Canelo's pound for pound and already all time great. All right. And he has a great chin. All right. Canelo doesn't get knocked down or anything like that. All right. He took, he ate, how many jabs he ate from Triple G in all those fights? He has a great chin. I don't think Caleb Plant is a feather fisted fighter. All right. And if he's working on his power with Breadman and he's looking stronger because he looks stronger, I want to sleep on his power. You know, I don't think Terrell is in his prime, but like I told you on a breakdown, that knockout was no fluke, man. That guy was setting that up. Real talk. You know? Yeah, Joyce. Jay, Joyce going to demolish that dude. He's going to demolish that old man. I mean, they both old, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> One looks old. That's the thing with Joyce. He getting older, but his volume is still crazy. What's up with this pay-per-view? I didn't have it on, right? Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. Yo, I'm sorry, man. I put on the wrong thing. They had the preview for Benavides. I thought I'm waiting for the fights to begin. I'm sorry about that, y'all. Um, Crowley and Ramos is on, and it's going into closing. It. They're closing out the third round. Damn, I'm so sorry, man. You guys said, yo, you guys gotta help me out, man. You guys can't be letting me ramble like that. Like the fight ain't on, man. People probably coming in and leaving because I ain't talking about the fight. But Crowley got Ramos with his back against the ropes right now, closing out this third round. Should be a good fight. Crowley seems to be hyped and into it. Should be a good war. I think Crowley got to outwork him. But, I, you know, yeah, you guys got to help me out, man. Don't don't let me go that long with ranting. I mean, not ranting, but just talking. And you got the fight on. <laughs> I go on Showtime app because I have it on TV. I'm using the app. I pay for the pay per view, so I got everything set up. But it's just playing Plant Benavides story and a preview. I have no idea. I'm thinking I'm waiting for the fight to start. I totally forgot we're waiting for the fight, man. I'm trying to get my, you know, you did. Last thing I'm trying to do is order the pay per view, not to watch it. <laughs> Yeah. All right. All right. So we going to round four. Oh, both of their faces is busted up already. They've probably been they probably been banging it out right in the beginning of the fourth round. Crowley just comes right back on Ramos, and he got Ramos on his back foot right now. I like Crowley. He's a dog. Like I, I like him. He's a dog. I just don't know how he looks against the top tier fighters. He's a dog, though. I like to see him against Butayev. That would be a good fight. He should get Butayev in there, or if he get Alexis Rocha or somebody in there, that would be good. If he if he gets through this fight, I mean, nice uppercuts for Ramos. Ramos land a couple uppercuts. Crowley getting hit too much. Crowley, 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 Crowley didn't hit too much. All right, he's being aggressive, but he's walking into everything that Ramos is throwing right now. Ramos look very comfortable on the ropes, at least at this moment he does. He's he's winning his round so far. Oh, he he hit him with a low shot. Rep broke it up. All right, so this first minute of this fight, I mean, this round. Oh, another low. That was low, too. Oh, the ref separated him. Ref is giving him another warning. That was low. That one was low for sure. Crowley steps in and hit him with a low one. Well, ref don't say nothing.
Crowley got to be careful. He, he took a lot of shots so far. Nice right hand lands for Ramos. Crowley's breathing now. Uh oh. Crowley getting touched up a little too much here in this round. Ramos is trying to back up Crowley, see what he do. Oh, another shot low, Ramos. He's going to take the point. It's over. Damn, Ramos was having a good round, and he's... Did he take the point? All right, he did not take a point. Just, just to confirm, he stopped it and timed it. But he gave him a very, 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 very harsh warning. Like, yo, that's three times this round, though. That's going to be bothering you now because you're trying to go low. But every time you go low, you're going too low. Crowley starting to do better second half of this round. Nice right hand from uh, Ramos. Oh, they good, good, good shit. <laughs> Thanks, Star. I don't think so. I don't agree with that. <laughs> yeah, I think as soon as Zang Zang starts getting burnt out, that's when the fight is over. You know, I think Joyce is going to be difficult for anybody to beat, to be honest. He's going to be difficult for anybody to beat, man. I don't even believe Fury's going to fight him. You know, I don't think. I don't think he's unbeatable or anything like that. I'm just saying, like, like that's just a guy that you just don't want to fight. I don't think anybody would want to fight him. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, when it comes to him, people are going to look for better options. All right, so we're in round five. Again, you know, I just started watching it at the end of the third. Nice right hand from Ramos Lance. Crowley's taking a more safety approach. You know, he's he's throwing a lot of jabs, but Ramos is countering him with big shots. He's he's getting hurt by these shots, man. You can see it in his face. Crowley's getting some big shots. Ramos caught him with another right hand, another right cross, and a right to the body. Crowley is getting some big, he's getting punished right now to be honest and he's coming forward ramos is on on the ropes but ramos is creating space and crowley's back into like he now they're back close range crowley just led in the combo he's trying to walk outwork him in the middle but when they when they were that mid-range long range ramos was just connected with some bigger shots now that they back in the phone booth right now, it looks like Crowley is outworking them a little bit. But whenever there's some space between them, Ramos is connected with the cleaner, harder, more effective shots for sure. At least these last couple of rounds that I've seen. Nice combination from Ramos halfway through the fifth. Tough fight so far, man. Crowley's starting to take a little advantage here. Nice combination from Ramos. Like Crowley's definitely throwing more punches, but Ramos lands the harder punches. Nice combination from Crowley just now. 45 seconds left in the fifth round.
Nice left hand from Crowley. Nice jabs from Crowley. This sound, this round's looking, it's starting to look similar to the last because Ramos started with the better firepower, but Crowley just outworked them for the second half of the round. And that's what's happening in this fifth round again, just like the fourth. Nice left hand from Crowley. Ramos is starting to look overwhelmed now. See, if, if Ramos don't hurt Crowley, even with those bigger shots, if he doesn't hurt him bad or put him down, he he's going to get outworked in the second half because Crowley has not stopped, even with the shots. Oh, there was a headbutt clash in here. I didn't, I didn't even catch that. Clarence says, uh, hey, Wave, you was not lying about the UK boxing scene. My cousin lives in London, and he agreed with everything you said about live boxing atmosphere. Here. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, everyone that was there with me or or anyone that's from there that know I went and stuff, everyone that I met that night, they all were saying, like, yo, this is nothing. He's like, you, if you ain't go to Wembley or the O2, you didn't even really experience it. Like, he said... They were saying to me in the arena, he was, they were like, this is like, this is like average. You know, that fight between Yard and Better BF is average. They say, if you go to the O2 for a big fight or, or like Wembley, they were like, yo, this is, this is nothing. All right. So we're in round six. Difficult to score these fights because, I mean, these rounds, because, you know, I think from the couple that I've seen, Ramos is is definitely, you know, landing the more effective shots, but Crowley is just he's just smothering him right now. I mean, Crowley's best. Crowley is basically smothering his own punches too because he's land he's throwing more and he's landing some, but he's not getting that full extension. Like he's not, he's just like peppering him, you know. But he's not giving Ramos any space anymore now. Now Crowley's like mauling him. And he's he's using his forearms to keep him right there on the ropes. Nope, that was a low shot from Crowley. Ref didn't say nothing. Nice combination from Crowley. Throws a right hand and a straight straight left right after. Crowley to Southpaw. Yeah, Ramos is uh Ramos gotta get off the ropes. He's just too. He needs some space. He looked good when they had some space. He don't look good when it's when it's straight like he's just not getting, he's not connected with no shots that he was connected the last couple of rounds. What's up, Pito? See, Ramos is connect with, uh, with an uppercut here and there. But Crowley is not leaving him alone. Ramos is trying to get away from him, trying to get some space. But Crowley is just, he's staying on his ass, man. He's not, and he's not, he's not slowing down with the punches. I don't know, man. It's it's tough because I, I still feel that Ramos lands the cleaner punches. I just don't know how the judges are looking at this right now. It's very, very close because the pacing of it keeps changing with every round. So in this round, Crowley started strong. He was outworking Ramos. But this second half of the round in the sixth round, now Ramos is in control to me. He's landing the better shots. He's creating some space and getting off. So it's the last two was Ramos first and then Crowley. Now this round is Crowley first, then Ramos. Tough. It's going to be tough to score.
What do you guys think of this fight so far? Any of you guys watching? What do you guys think? Anyone that's here watching it? What do you think between uh, Ramos and Qua uh, Crowley? Now we're going into the seventh. All right, we're in the uh, seventh round now. I'm I'm currently not scoring this because I, I kind of started late. Um, but I, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's it's a pretty tough fight to score because they're both getting off. And it really depends on what you like here. I like what Ramos is just doing a little bit more, but I do think that I do think he needs to really hurt Crowley, you know, buzz him. You know. Unofficially, Steve Farhood got Crowley up two rounds. All right, unofficially in this uh going into starting the seventh round. Nice right hand from Ramos. Halfway through the seventh. Ramos connected with a right to the body. Got to remember, Ramos lands another low blow. They're going to take a point from him. Nice combination from Crowley. Ooh, nice uppercut from Ramos lands. Crowley's a tough dude, man, because he's taking some big shots. He lands a combination. He's taking the bigger shots, though, between the two. But he's outworking. He's still outworking Ramos. He's still throwing more, landing more. Ramos just hits you. It seems like every... Three or four punches, Crowley lands. We're almost only need to land one to pop this dude's head back, you know, bloody him up. Ooh, nice. Another nice combination from Crowley. Crowley's just throwing way too much now, though. And he's just wrestling him and keeping him off the ropes. He's not letting him go anywhere. This he's looking like Brandon Figueroa right now, you know. Just all just swarming him. He has a great conditioning, man. But he's a blood, his face is a bloody mess right now. Yeah, Crowley definitely got that round. What are you guys doing over there, man? Any of you guys having a drink? What are you guys having a drink? What are you guys drinking if you are having a drink? What's the drink of choice tonight for you guys? Yeah, that was a nice combination from Crowley. Do a nice uppercut and and came over with the the right hook. Crowley is a tough dude, man. All right, so we're in round number eight, and this is a good fight so far. Every single round, action-packed. And uh, this is a 12-rounder, so. Hawker says he's taking drink. 
Not me says Heineken and a monkey shoulder scotch. Never heard of monkey shoulder. I'll look it up. Scott says he's drinking a King's Ginger. Gin liquor, 30%. King George drank it before going driving in the 20s. Yeah, it's going to be hard to outwork Crowley. You know, this man, Crowley is a guy that you got to have to hurt because his engine is just too, it's too much. It's too much. His volume is insane, man. He's just not slowing down at all. Yeah, Crowley's getting off now. He's really getting off. He's landing everything. He's going to his body. Ramos is slowing down a little bit. You know, I think he's starting to really, you can see it now. And this is what I said a few rounds ago. I'm like, man, he's not going to be able to fight like an, at that same pace in the later rounds. You know, I don't think Crowley is really hurting him. Like, I don't think Crowley got big power, but. It's just the fact that he's outworking him and he's fighting his fight. He's in control of the fight right now. Jay Foreman says, the more I think about it, the better chance I think Plant has has at the upset. Kind of just want Benavides to win so I can see the Canelo fight. Yeah, that's the main reason why I want Benavides to win because I want to see that fight. I've been wanting to see that fight. I'm mad we missed it because, you know, Benavidez wasn't a champion at the time, you know, but, you know, I'm not, I, I don't have anything against Plant or Ben. I like both of them, you know, but I kind of want Benavidez to fight Canelo. But it doesn't matter because Canelo not going to fight him this year anyway, you know. He's not going to fight him this year anyway. Even if he, if Benavidez wins the fight, Canelo wants to fight B-Bowl again. Yeah, Crowley is not a joke, man. He throws way too many punches. Oh, thank you, Calvin. Appreciate your uh, comments. There's no drinking. Listen to your your cool. You kind of remind me of E. Rodney Jones, who used to work on WVON, cooler than air conditioning, that radio vibe. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that, bro. Uh, all right, so we're going into the knife round, I think. Man. I can't wait for the I mean this is a good fight here you know but I mean Ramos can't do nothing with Crowley all over him like that and Ramos is trying to move he's doing all this moving around the ring now but Crowley's just following him around and oh nice right hand Right, it's nice right hand from Ramos. Ramos found a way to create some kind of space here. And he's doing, he's landing some nice right hands. He's trying to get away, but Crowley's damn near holding on to him just so he don't run. I think, you know, yeah, he see that Ramos is back to land the big shots here because he's created some space. And he's catching Crowley. That's a problem with Crowley, though. That's another problem with him, though. Once he step up and fight fighters that hit a little bit harder, you know what I'm saying, and, and can deal with this kind of pressure a little better, he's going to have a tougher time because in this fight here, he's throwing a lot of punches, but he's eating too many, too. He fight a real knockout artist, he's going to be in trouble. People are booing. I can't tell. I have the volume like barely up. 
That's crazy what people are born. It's pretty good. Tony says Canelo is wow if he wants to fight Bevo again. He's not going to beat Bevo. Yeah, I don't I don't believe he is neither. You know, but I mean, it's like he lost already. I don't think the fight was really that competitive. You know, I gave Canelo like three rounds. You know. Um I mean, it wasn't a domination. It's just like Canelo just didn't have enough to win. And Bevo was comfortable in winning. It wasn't like, I thought the Zerto fight was more of a, like, it was just too wide. I don't think, I don't think Zerto had anything for Bevo. But what I will say is that I think Canelo does better if he if he uses his jab more. Nice left hand lands for Crowley. Yeah, I think Canelo can do better if he uses his jab more. He didn't throw any jabs in that fight. You know, but I think his... The problem with Canelo is this, he's just not going to have the conditioning to to keep it up. Like, even if he's doing better early in the rematch, which I think is a huge possibility, even if he's doing a little better, I don't think he's going to be able to maintain whatever's working, you know? Wow. Benavidez girl looks really good. She looks really, really good. Show him into the ring now. On the into the arena, I mean. Looks really, really good. That's Caleb Plant's girl? That's not the same wife? Or maybe she just straightened her hair and looks different. Okay, she might just look different because she's straightened her hair. She's beautiful too. She's she's very, very pretty. Damon, Damon said, uh Damon said great opening match. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, please hit that like button if you haven't already. I we had a tough round, and, and to be honest, I don't know, you know, I think Ramos had a good round, but honestly, I think he needs to be, he needs to, if he wants to win this fight, he needs to come at Crowley, like, right now, like, right, right now. He needs to be aggressive, and he needs to put in, like, he needs to put that power down like he's been doing, but he needs to lead a little bit more. You know, because I know Crowley's throwing a lot of punches and you, you know, but you felt this power. He's doing it now, though. He's doing his best to try to keep this fight in the center of the ring, which he should have been doing rounds ago. Halfway through the tenth, this is a I feel like this fight is a, a, a is 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 they're fighting at a Ramos's pace right now. Uh, Crowley is not using the same uh, aggression that he's used in the uh, previous rounds, you know. But he's not doing bad with them fighting on the outside. He's not doing bad. Oh, uh, what's up with uh what's up with Kome and this? This they've just been showing the ring for a while. Maybe uh do I gotta reset this or something? It's been on pause for a minute. What's up, MAW? I'm surprised Crowley's taking his foot off the gas. I don't think this is the type of fight he needs right now. All right. Now, 30 seconds left in the 10th, and 
Ramos backed himself up to the ropes. Maybe Crowley is a little burnt out. He's still throwing, but it, it, he don't seem as aggressive as before. I think he might be burnt out a little bit. Ramos need to take advantage. I picked Crowley. By the way, if you guys weren't here early, I I picked I picked Crowley to win this one on points. Good round for Ramos, you know. Who's winning? I uh, I'm I'm assuming um Crowley. Yeah, I would think Crowley is winning this fight. You know, but I don't think it's wide though. Uh I didn't see the first few rounds. Maybe Crowley took the round off and he's going to turn it up this 11 for 12. All right. Um, round 11 and Crowley just comes straight out at him. So, yeah, he probably took the 10th round off. So he's back on the inside and he got – um. he's back. He's back to chasing – Rommel's down. Nice check left hook from Ramos. He's doing well with the pressure so far in this round. He's keep he's staying moving. He's keeping the distance a little better than he was earlier. Let me turn this damn caption off. Crowley's trying to be aggressive, but Ramos is doing good boxing. Not a lot of clean punching from Nita. Nice uh, left hand to the body. Crowley's been outside. Crowley... At this point, he's been on point with landing that left to the body. Um, but outside of that, it's not too many clean punches from from either. Ramos is landing a big right hand, though. Oh, he hurt. He goes down. Ramos landed another big right hand. And Crowley goes down, but he... It's like one of those ones we got to see in replay because he goes down. He was, he didn't, he, I don't know if his glove touched the canvas. He like, he crouched down, you know? Uh-oh, we got some trouble, y'all. We got some trouble, man. I don't know. Ramos is definitely winning this round. See, that, that punishment that Crowley has taken on fight it's starting to have its effect on him. And the crowd is cheering now. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, man. I don't know. This fight could go in your way, you know. I didn't put no money down on this one. Thank God. We got to see the replay of the knockdown. I want to see if his gloves actually uh, touch the canvas. Let me see. Hold on. They're showing it now. So he got buckled by Ramos, right? But Crowley just kept coming forward. And maybe like 10 seconds after that, Ramos caught him with the feint. Oh, 
Crowley's gloved in touch. He crouched, but his gloves didn't touch. It didn't touch, y'all. It shouldn't have been scored a knockdown. Maybe they can they can reverse that. I still think Ramos won the round, though. He hurt. He buckled Crowley twice in that round. We got to see what happens after this. We got to see what happens. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. We going into the final round. What happened? What happened? Wait, wait, wait. Something's going on. Ref stopped the fight for a second. All right, they showing a replay now of the knockdown. That really wasn't a knockdown. See the ref? Oh, they're trying to appeal the knockdown. They taking way too much time, man. It's the twelfth round, man. No knockdown. They reversed it, y'all. That's what they they were trying to appeal the knockdown. They appealed the knockdown. All right. They should have did that in between the round, though. They taking too much time off, man. Cause this, you know what I'm saying? Like it's the twelfth round. You got a pressure fighter there. You know, you you got to keep this fight going. Crowley lands a left hand. So there's no knockdown. Ramos won the round, though, but it's not a knockdown. So this is going to be a tough one, man. This one might, you know, I don't know how the refs are looking like at, at this fight, but this might mess around and be a draw. Crowley took a lot of punishment in this fight, though. Honestly, I think Ronald's overall the last three or four, three rounds or so, I think he's he's been more in control. Oh, I think Ronald's hurt him with a right hand to the body. Crowley comes back with a left hand to Ramos's body. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't want to be a judge for this fight, to be honest. Just for, I, I don't know what happened in the first three rounds, but judging off what I've seen, it's a tough one to call, man. Crowley's doing better this round, though, so far to me. Ramos is trying to not land another big right hand. Good fight. Very good fight, by the way. I don't know how the crowd... Somebody said the crowd was booing. I don't know how they were booing. They seem to be into it now, though. It was a very good fight. Nice right hand. Nice right hand from um, Ramos. He has uh, Crowley going back a little bit. Crowley got a pressure, man. I think he, I think him getting hurt last round, it's changed the way he's fighting in his 12th round. I think he still might be a little buzzed from it. Yeah, Crowley's fighting a totally different fight. Nice left hand to the body lands from Ramos. Crowley lands a left up top. The co-main event is Chris Colbert against Jose Valenzuela. Fight is done. Good fight. Good fight. Good fight. Good fight. Good fight, man. Good fight. I don't know. I got no stake in who wins this fight. I don't know. I didn't watch the entire fight. But I can tell you right this. Ramos landed the clear and more effective shots. Crowley landing way more 
and outworked them at points in a fight. It really depends on what the ref likes. They say something about his Cody Crowley's birthday. Maybe they're generous to him. You know, I don't know. I really don't know. All right. There's no knockdowns in the fight. Crowley almost got knocked down in the 11th. EB says Joey Spence is the co-main Cobra fights next. Okay. All right. That's fine. Got to wait and see. Guys in the chat, who you guys think won the fight? Trey Five says, say, bro, after watching more film, I think Plant outboxes Benavides. You might be right, man. We just got to wait and see. You know, I think I really believe it's a 50-50 fight, man. It's 50 50. Your plant wins. I'm not going to be surprised at all. You know? If plant wins tonight, I'm not going to be surprised at all. And I told you, and that's why I hedged it. I told you, don't even be surprised. You know, don't just think that plant can win on points. His only winning, way of winning is on points. I bet it plant straight up because. I don't know. You know, I don't know what's up with his power. I don't know. I don't know if I don't know what, but I play I bet it for plant straight up hedge with Benavides by KO. You know. Some people think that Benavides and, and is gonna win on points. That could happen too, but that's not what I put my money on. PR Strim says if plant wins, I'm up 10k. That's crazy. That's good, though. If Plant wins, I'm up by decision on KO or straight up. Let me know. I'll be right back, y'all. Let me uh, just grab some ice for my drink. Well, hold on. Let me wait. Let me wait to the decision first. Hold on. Score clocks. Majority decision. They're going to give it to uh, Crowley. 114-114 draw. One fifteen, one thirteen, one sixteen, one twelve. Crowley. Yeah, Crowley. They ain't rob them neither. Those those are score. Those are close scorecards, man. One draw, one sixteen, one twelve, one fifteen, one thirteen. I didn't see the first three rounds, so I can't call it. But you know, from what I see, it, it was you know he probably got more rounds. He was definitely more on um, busy. His face is busted up pretty bad though. They showing a close up on him right now. Damn, my man gonna have a headache early. His headache is gonna be crazy tomorrow. PR straight says straight up. Oh, okay. Got you. Got you. Got you. Good for you, man. Good luck, bro. Good luck. I, I don't put that much money down on these bets, man. I don't gamble like that, bro. <laughs> uh, the pay-per-view cost me $74.99. They booing? They start out with saying, thank you, Al Heyman. They booing hard. Damn, he getting deep, y'all. He's talking about how broke he was, how suicidal he's been the last couple of years. Damn, this dude's going through it, bro. He really crying right now. They starting to cheer for him now. Damn, he really, he really going through it, bro. Good for him, man. Yeah, 
Congrats to him, though. I don't think they need to boo, man. They probably boo him because, um, you know, he, he got hurt. But if you watching the fight, he clearly was outworking. You know what I'm saying? Even though, even though, even though, even though Ramos was definitely like landing the heavier shots, you know. Yeah, his face is busted up, man. He took this is what I was saying earlier, y'all. Um, man, he steps up, man. If he steps up, I know he's waiting for a shot, but if he steps up, man, he's gonna get punished, you know, because that that aggression is cool, but I don't know, bro. I don't know. You know that the that welterweight division is no joke. That's all I'm saying. And he can't eat that many punches. You know what I'm saying? He said his dad committed suicide. I didn't hear that part. I heard about him being suicidal, and he's he's almost committed suicide. I didn't hear about his dad. I didn't hear that. Yo, the, the welterweight division is tough, man. And to be honest, EB says I have to watch it from the beginning. Crowley won that close fight, but definitely Crowley. Got you. Got you. Yeah, he scored the first three. Um, But yeah, going back to what I was saying, if he actually fights like Virgil Ortiz or Jerron Ennis or you know what? I mean, Conor Ben, he doing his own thing. I don't know what Conor Ben is doing. You know, but Stan Jonas, Ennis, Ortiz. Like I, I said, I, I want to see, I want to see him fight Rocha. I want to see him fight Butaev. I would like to see the David Avenesia fight. That's cool. Roman Villa. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't want him. I wouldn't want him to go straight to like the very, very top. Oh, his dad committed suicide too. He did. Okay, damn. I didn't hear that part. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. That's messed up. I think he beats Jamal James. I think he beats. I think he beats Jamal James, and I think he beats Blair Cobbs. I actually think he beats Michael McKenson too. I'm just going down box rec right now. I think he beats Michael McKenson. I think he beats. Blair Cobbs and Jamal James. Castillo Clayton, I think he beats him too. You know, even like a guy like Igus Kavalaskis, like I don't know, bro, because that dude can crack, you know, and, you know, all Igus needs is some space, man. If he touches you up like the way Ramos was doing, you want to sleep. You know, I don't know what Kavalaskis is doing right now, but. Yeah, nah. You can't get hit like that from some of these other dudes. You know? Yeah. Yeah, Jay says that the vision is filled with sharks. Absolutely. All right, so Colbert and Valenzuela is next. So my bad. I was wrong on that. That's the fight that I'm really looking for, right? I mean, all fights are good. Spencer and Ramos is good, too. Yeah, man. What you guys got on that? Um, Who you guys think between uh, wins between Spencer and Ramos? Let me know in the comments. Not for nothing, man. Showtime schedule has been fire this year so far. Y'all can't front. Like, Showtime, with all the rumors, they've been giving us a good fight card every single weekend this year. 
Rhoda said, get your ice way. Respect tequila. <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. Yo, yo, y'all hear me? Ralph, Ralph got uh Ramos over Spencer. Yeah, I got. I, I'm not gonna edge it for Spencer for a decision. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna say he's gonna pull it off. We'll see. I think it's 50-50, though. This is my favorite, yo. This is my favorite tequila. Under a hundred dollars. Maestro Dobel Pavito. This is my favorite. For under a hundred dollars, this is my favorite. They need to send me a check because I just bought three bottles. Three bottles I bought. Just so I can have it. Extras. And it can last. This is hard to find here in New York. All right. Hunter got Ramos winning. Jay Foreman says there's a lot of good fights this year. Colin and Lopez. Yeah, that is a good fight. Yeah, I brought it, I brought it up briefly earlier. That is a really, really good fight. Really good fight. 126 is nothing but good fights to be made up there. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 nothing but good fights up there. You know, we just gotta get some unifications though. That's all. Smash that like button, by the way, if you haven't already. Smash that like button if you haven't. Hit that, hit that thumbs up for me real quick. I'm sure most of you've been here for a minute. What happens to Plant if he loses? What happens? You know, losing to Canelo and then losing to Benavides. You know, I mean, I'm sure he got paid a, a nice... I mean, he definitely got paid nicely uh, uh, against Canelo. But I'm sure he's getting a nice, nice check, too, for this fight as well. What happens if he does lose? Like, you know, um, what happens? You know, is he going to stick around and just be... You know, that journeyman guy, not journeyman. He's not going to be a journeyman. But what I'm saying is, you know, everybody's going to want to fight him. The is It's going to be like a nice gauge to see what you can do against him since he lost to Benavides and Canelo, you know? I still think he'll be hard for other fighters to beat. But losing to Canelo and Benavides... It's going to be hard for him, you know? No, I love scotch, too. I love scotch, too. I love scotch and whiskey. I'm not much of a bourbon guy, though. It's not too many bourbons I like like that, to be honest. Black Cat says, 168 isn't a powerhouse division. He could still be a, a belt holder. Yo, let me ask you something. Yo, you know what? Let's have the conversation. I mean, I know the fight is on tonight. But let's have the conversation. How good is Dave Morrell Jr. already? Do you guys feel that he could beat maybe a Benavides or Canelo do you guys feel like he's going to be a real threat to anybody at 168? Let's have the conversation. Might as well. I know he doesn't have the resume. I'm not talking about the resume. We He does not have that resume yet, right? I'm just, I'm just based on what we've seen from him. Where do y'all rate him?
you know, because he's already a WBA regular champ. So what do y'all feel? Like, he only has eight fights. Let me know in the comments what you think. Because I don't, I don't feel like we talk about him enough. Because he is a factor. And I think he's seriously dangerous for anybody. D Damon, I think I think he blows. I think he blows Berlanga away right now. I think he blows him away right now, yo. I, I don't think Berlanga. I think Berlanga needs more time for him, to be honest. Now Canelo and Benavides is a different story, but Berlanga, I think he destroys Berlanga right now. You know, I think he stops Berlanga. I don't even want that to happen, to be honest. That's just me, though. That's just me. I don't. I don't rate Belinga that high. I think he needs more time. I think his popularity is is bigger than his skills. You feel me? I me mean, on a low, man. Chris Cobra is in the ring. Valenzuela is in the ring, man. On a low. I really, really hope Chris Colbert win. But I don't know, man. I'm rooting for Chris Colbert. But I don't know, man. I just don't know. You know, I don't know. Like, this fight is so dangerous. Chris Colbert is 26. Valenzuela is 23. I just don't know, man. I don't think it should happen right now. Whoever loses this, man, especially if somebody gets stopped. Mm -mm. To be honest, though, I need, I think Chris Colbert, excuse me, I think Chris Colbert need to be aggressive because Chris Colbert, he takes a lot of rounds off. Has Berlinga been pro for seven years? Has it been that long? Really? Hold on. Already? I gotta look that up. That's crazy if it has been. Oh yeah, you're right, yo. Damn, that's crazy. So he he went pro when he was eighteen. He was only eighteen when he put pro. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess. I guess. Sabrina is rooting for Valenzuela. Same last name. Got you. <laughs> Makes. Yo, I told y'all. I told um Jay. I told. Like I said it earlier. They could take my money for this card. This card is excellent. I wish all pay per views was like this card right here. They can take my money. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe not every weekend, but they can take my money. This card is what pay-per-views on the cards are supposed to be. You know? Like, if you're not giving me two fighters that I feel like are absolute stars, which these two aren't, you got to give me a great on the card, which they did. So they delivered with that. You know, because I know what big, big mega fights... The undercards are always whack because all the purse money is going to the big names. But this here, you gotta give me, you gotta give me the undercar. And they did they delivered that, like real talk. All right, we about to start round one, y'all. I don't know. Yo, yo, tell me in the comments real quick. Last before the start. Who y'all got? Colbert or Venezuela? Let me know.
I don't know, bro. This this one got me kind of nervous because I I I'm rooting for my guy Chris Colbert. I want him to win. Mind you, Chris Colbert moved up to 130 for this. Valenzuela was already fighting at 135. Chris Cobra out here wearing the yellow and black looking like a bumblebee. Oh, no. No, y'all, it's over. Yo, Valenzuela caught him with a left hand, a left hook. Hey, Chris Cobra went down. He's back up. He's back up. He sees all right. Yo, the way he went down, though, I thought it was over. Yo, Chris Cobra is getting, oh, my God, nah. Valenzuela clipped him. Somebody said it in the comments it was going to happen. Oh, Chris Cobra got hit with a, oh, Chris Cobra, oh, no, he's fucking him up. Oh, see, Chris Colbert's getting rocked. Oh, oh, man, nah, man. Oh, nah, Chris Colbert, man, I, I think it's over, bro. Valenzuela's going crazy. Yo, Chris, come on, man, pull through, bro. Damn, man. Chris Colbert's, yo, Chris Colbert's getting beat down, kid. Oh, come on, right. get it, get it together, man, get it together. Yo, this is crazy, man. Come on, Chris. Yo, he just got to relax, yo. Just relax, man. Damn, yo. Valenzuela caught him, man. Bad. I didn't think he was going to get up. Oh, he caught him with another one. Oh, no. Valenzuela. Oh, shit. Valenzuela got him. He got him on the ropes. Yo. Yo, it's a whole minute. We're not even two minutes into the round. And Valenzuela's, every time he connects with the left hand, it hurts Chris Colbert every time, bro. Oh, my God, yo. Oh, yo, Chris, come on, bro. Don't do this to me, bro. I ain't putting no money on you, but I want you to win. <laughs> come on, don't do this to me, man. Damn. Don't get knocked out, bro, please. Damn, this is crazy, man. Valenzuela is landing left to the body, landing left to the top. Chris is, is, is trying to... Oh, Chris is looking bad out here, bro. He hasn't switched yet or anything. He's still fighting as an orthodox. Yeah, all right. Round's coming to a close, man. All right. Chris got to get it together, man. This look crazy. This look crazy. Damn, man. Damn. He survived, bro. Yo. Oh, my God. Yo, what is happening, man? Chris Cooper is having a meltdown, man. Damn, yo. Why he go on camera? He said I never went on video and started talking about all these fighters like that. Oh, he got caught lacking. He got caught with a left hand, and he went down. I'm surprised he got up. The way he fell, Chris came in, stepped in, tried to throw a right. He threw a right, and uh, he tried to hook with Valenzuela, and he was all open, like wide open. His chin was wide open, and Valenzuela just caught him, had that hook that shook. That hook was short. Oh, Chris is looking like, oh, my God. His defense looks terrible in this fight so far. Oh, my God. Yeah, Sabrina, your your cousin is kicking ass right now. <laughs> All right, round two, y'all. Big round for Valenzuela. I mean, he's clearly winning the fight. <laughs> Chris can't even do what he did against Hector because it's too early in the fight for him to quit. It's a 10-rounder. You need to step it up right now. Cobra's coming out fast. He's letting his hands go. He's fighting as a southpaw now. I, told, I, I said earlier, man, I think Chris is just bad at southpaws. He looked good against the righties, looked bad against the lefties, and it's happening all over again. 
Valenzuela, Valenzuela reached in for like lunged in for a left hand miss, but he, he got to be careful. Chris is going to have to fight. Chris is going to have to fight, man. You know, you was doing all that talking, man. He switched back to orthodox just now. Valenzuela is again connected with left hands, and then he's starting to do it again. Damn, yo, dude said Cobra is washed. <laughs> Halfway through the second. Oh, nice left hook from Chris. Best shot he landed so far. Better round for him, though. Come on, I need something to happen. Give me something. Give me something. Give me something. I need I need somebody to get hurt again. Nice jab. Nice jab from uh, Jose. Nice work from Jose so far. Chris is Chris is having a good round though. Nice jabs from Chris. Nice nice work from Chris. Much better round for him. Jose still landing some good jabs, some good lefts to the body this round, all round. Nice combos from Chris. Most of them miss, but I think they has had a little head clash between them both of them. Chris is too upright, right? He's too upright. He's not like leaning. He's not getting low. He's just. Straight up, always. What do you guys think? They think that second round was close. I think Chris could have gotten around, but it was close. Yeah, I think Chris might have edged around, but it could go either way. Valenzuela got off too. He landed some good jabs, landed some left hands. Yeah, see, the problem with Chris, yo, he was just doing too much talking, yo. Even with Shakur Stevenson, when he was on that live, they was talking crazy. He's talking about the Wilder, Spence, all these people. That was a good round for Cobra, though. He got to he gotta keep that going, though, because if you watch Chris before, you know he takes rounds off. You know what I'm saying? All right, win a third. Nice, nice right hand from Chris. Chris is starting to fight. I mean, he's fighting the fight he needs to fight. He just got to get caught. He got to be careful of getting caught like he did in the first round. That wasn't low. Oh, Valenzuela caught him with a left hand. Chris backed up as and looked at the ref, and Valenzuela started putting pressure on him. Those are body shots, bro, and I don't think Chris liked that. And now Valenzuela is all on him right now. Chris is clamming up right now, but Valenzuela landed a good three or four left to the body. He's still keeping them going. I don't think Chris likes those shots. Those fight, those shots weren't low. Another left to the body. Another left to the body. Ref is telling him to keep it up. I think that last one might have been low, but he's going to go right back to it. What up, Jay? We almost halfway through the third right now. Uh, Valenzuela is having a great round. Second went to uh, Colbert. Oh, that, that right hand looked low. Oh, yeah, the ref told uh, Chris to keep that up. Hey, yo, that sounds crazy. Oh, nice left foot. Nice combination from Chris Lands. 
Valenza lands two left hands and Chris sticks his tongue out as if he hasn't gotten hit hurt by those. Oh, nice left hook from Chris. I think that one hurt Valenzuela. It woke him up a little bit. Definitely buzzed him. Chris needs to keep this going. Whatever he's doing right now, Valenzuela landed another left. Oh, yo, Valenzuela caught him with another left hand. Valenzuela was going to the body and he looped it, brought it up, and he got he hit Chris clean. Oh, now he's on Chris. He's on him. He's on his ass right now in the corner. Chris, Chris is getting hit with so many lefts to the body this round. It's crazy. And that's the last thing Chris needs, to be honest, because if he slows down, he's getting touched up to the body. He's getting touched up to the body a lot this round. Man, he took so many right and lefts to the body this round. Ten seconds left in his third. Chris had some moments in his round, but definitely Jose's round. He's starting to be aggressive now. He's starting to uh, force a fight with Jose, but too late. Oh, heavyweights is on. Definitely got to cover this fight over the uh, Ease of Span car right now. Um, So I got a two to one. Valenzuela scored a knockdown in the first round. So I have a two to one so far. Um, Jose definitely won that third round for sure. Now, nah, I mean, Furlong, I feel you. Cobra is definitely showing heart. But. We still got a lot of fight to go. I mean, he's showing more heart than he did in the last fight. So that's good. But again, you know, like at the end of the day, you're supposed to. You're supposed to, you know, especially with the amount of talk you've been doing. Oh, Deontay Wilder just got there. They're showing him now. Well, they ain't showing him, but I can see him in the crowd. He just got there. Yeah, Valenzuela, when he, when, when, yo, when Valenzuela land the left is different. You know what I'm saying? Like when he left, he, when he lands it up top, he, he hurts. You can see the power, you know, he definitely got power. Valenzuela back to touching up his body with the jab and the left hand. Valenzuela is doing some great work right now, man. Nice combinations from him. Colbert is just, you know, in that high guard. And Valenzuela is just picking him apart little by little. You know, Chris is getting off a little bit, but right now, Valenzuela is doing a better work. Yo, Valenzuela keep landing right hands and, and body shots. And... Cooper keeps stopping and looking at the ref. I don't think those those shots are low. Like, you know, I'm not saying none of them were low, but he got to just. Oh, nice left hook from Chris Lance. Another one. Nice combination from Chris. Uh, just over a minute left in the fourth round. Valenzuela has been in control most of this round, but Chris is starting to get it. He's starting to get off a little bit right now. Come on, Chris. Chris is making it ugly right now. Yeah. I was about to say, Chris is, uh, he's back at Southport right now. 20 seconds left in the fourth. Combination from Jose. 
to the body and up top. Just attacking that high guard. Ooh. Another another good round from both, but I think Jose was in control longer. You know, let me see what y'all saying. Yeah, I'm not watching the ESPN. I'm like, I got my eye on it a little bit, but you know, I'm I'm gonna be covering the Showtime card into the main event. Uh, I gave Colbert the second in every other round to um Jose so far. Ayo says they scrapping, cud. <laughs> uh, what's up, Charles? You back? Shadow clock, man. I've been drinking this whole live. Been on for how long now? You've been on for a few hours. You late. EB gave it the fourth to, 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 to Colbert. All right, we back. We are in the fifth. Remember, guys, this is a tenth round, a ten rounder. This is a ten round fight. Nice right hand from Colbert lands. This is a good fight, y'all. By the way, please. Both the the first fight, the opening fight, was very good. And now this fight here is a very good action-packed technical fight. Both fighters are getting off. All the rounds have been competitive except the first. Chris just switched back to orthodox, but he's starting out fast this round. He caught him with a good right hook. Chris is starting off good this round. You can see some of the damage on Valenzuela's face. Jose needs to go back to attacking his body. Chris is starting to get off. Oh, nice right, nice hook and left hand follow up from Jose. Nice combo, land clean both shots. It has Chris backing up now. Another right hook lands for Jose. Might have been partially blocked. My bad. Damon seventy four ninety nine definitely. I'm getting my money's worth. All the fights should be good, though. I mean, all four fights are good matchup. All four fights outside of this one is based on one pressure fighter and one good boxer. So, you know, here is different. You got two good boxers. Nice left hand from Chris. Chris is, Chris is getting off. Chris is getting off, but he hasn't. He don't got the power of Santos. I think if he had Santos's power, like Jose's last fight, he would have put Jose down by now. Because he's landing the amount of shots to do it. But he's he don't have that kind of power. He hasn't really hurt um, Jose yet. He's buzzed him, but he hasn't really hurt him yet. One shot, one shot, one of the shots hurt him, uh, buzzed him a little bit. Jose's starting to come forward on Chris now. He's taking some shots, but I don't think Chris is comfortable with him being pressured like that. Nice right uppercut from Jose. I think that's a Chris round. Not enough from Jose. He has his moment. That's a Chris round for me. What do you guys got? How do you guys got this fight score so far? It's showing Riddick Bo. Riddick Bo is sitting next to Joe Joyce. Oh, shit. Joe Joyce. Where is this fight at, by the way? Where is this fight at? We got Sean, Sean Porter out there.
protest fight at? Dave Morrell, he's just talking about... Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's Sabrio Matias. Marcus Cousins is out there. Uh, where are they at? They're in Vegas? What Joe Joyce doing in Vegas, man? <laughs> All right, we're in the sixth round. I, I got to score two rounds to three for Jose, but depending on how these next rounds go, I think uh, Chris is definitely still in the fight, you know, and, and depending on how you score. Oh, nice uppercut lands for Jose. Jose lands a left hand, too. I think that hurt Chris. Chris is backed up and gets scored. Chris is hurt, but he's still up. Jose is all over him. He's swarming him, but Chris is blocking the, most, the majority of the punches. Yeah, Chris is Chris got hurt from that first shot. Oh, that left hand got through. Chris is hurt. He's he's he he held. He held. Yeah, I think he got a cut, y'all. Yeah, his eye. He's hurt. That one of those shots got him. One or two of them. Jose started out fast the sixth round. Yeah, Chris got. Chris getting touched up the sixth round so far. Jose exploded, and Chris can't see out of his left yard. Right, he's backing up. That shot was low. Chris, yo, Jose just landed on a low blow just now. Yo, I think you can see now. Chris is hurt. Chris, eye, he's just blinking. His left eye is messed up. Oh! Jose landed a right hook just now, right on that same eye. Not a left, a left. Yo, Jose's shots are low this round, y'all. The ref finally separated them. The ref got to give him a harsh run. That's too many. That's too many in a row. That's three. I counted three this round so far. I mean, he's clearly winning the round, but you can't just hit him continuously, hit him low like that. Nice uppercut from Jose. Jose is just picking Chris apart this round. Chris is getting dominated this round. Jose, best round for Jose Valenzuela since the first round. He's just hitting him with angles, and he's just picking Chris's high guard apart. I don't think Chris has fully recovered yet from those uh, shots he took early in the round. Um, yeah. Nice combination for Chris. Finally opens up with this 15 seconds left in the in the uh, sixth round. Nice strong f finish for Chris. I mean, he he let us know just now that he's still in the fight, but man, jo Jose dominated him that round. Yeah, I mean. I've given Chris two rounds. I think at the very most, maybe three. But Jose, when he's getting rounds, he's more dominant. He's had two dominant rounds in his fight. This round and the first. If you are in, smash that like button. Everybody that's here, hit that like button so we can get more people to join up. Chris got to win these rounds, man. These rounds here, we're in the seventh, I think. He got to step it up now. This is a 10-round fight. This is not a 12-round fight. We don't have much time left to go. All right? He's been knocked down. He needs to put, step it up right now. Again, and this is another fight where Chris is the favorite to win. Nice. Chris starts out fast, man. He's he's attacking the body. He's throwing combinations on Jose. Unofficially, Steve Farhood has it two rounds to five for for Valenzuela, which is what I have it. 
he gave he actually gave Colbert the same exact two rounds I gave him, the the fourth and the uh, first. Got to remember, there's a knockdown in there too. Nice combinations. Chris is having an excellent round so far. He's coming in and he's pressuring Jose. Very close on the inside. He's coming in with a high guard. He's marching in, throwing jabs and throwing combinations. Jose just created some space. He's landing left hands to the body and up top. Halfway through the seventh now. And Jose's starting to let his hands go. Oh, they both trade right hands. Cobra is still like taunting him, like, bro, this fight. Right. He's doing. Let's go. Jose ties up. Chris is walking him down now. Maybe Jose is taking a round off because he had a big left. Uh, he had a big uh round last round. Jose throws a combination, but Chris just walks through it, and he's coming. He's marching forward on him, taunting him, yelling at him. Jose is starting to bleed from his nose, I think. He's starting to look a little gassed here. I think he gave a lot out that last round, y'all. I don't know. I don't like the body language from Jose right now in this round. 35 seconds left on the seventh. Oh, big Right hand and left up top from Chris. Chris is dominating Jose this round. Best round from Chris Colbert. And he's yelling at him. He's taunting him. And he's walking him down. I think Jose might have punched himself out a little bit that last round, y'all. He's getting he's getting bullied by Chris now. Big round for seven. Big round for Jose in the six, but even bigger round from Chris. Chris destroyed him this round. Wow, this is, yo, this is a great fight, y'all. This is a great, a lot of back and forth action from both. This is a great round. I mean, this is a great fight. I gave Chris that round. I have it for rounds two, three for Jose, but the momentum just shifted again to Chris Colbert. Chris might need a little bit more. I mean, he got dropped in this fight. If he he got to keep that pressure going if he's expecting, you know, to win this one. Um, and for Jose, he can't take another round off like that. He needs to step it up now because if we get if we get a, another round of just that, it's going to look bad for Jose. I'm telling you, his body language didn't look great in that round. Maybe he's taking a round off, but he took a lot of punish, punishment that round. All right, so we're going into the, where are we, the eighth round? All right, we're in the eighth round, y'all. And Chris is coming out fast again. Oh, nice hook from Chris. Chris is putting pressure on Jose. Oh, big left hand from Jose, and he hurts Chris again. And Chris is back against the ropes again. He's clamming up again. I don't know what's happening. I don't know if he's hurt. I can't tell. He comes back, and he scores with a right hand. Uh-oh. Now Jose's coming forward again. Chris is backing up. Chris can't back up. He can't back up. He got to keep doing what he was doing. Nice combination from Jose Lands. Colbert is trying to take control, regain control of this fight, but Jose started out that first minute destroying Chris. We still got two minutes left to go in the eighth round. Chris lands a right hand to the body, and now he's starting to march for halfway through the eighth now. It's like, yo, when Jose lands a clean left hand up top, he always backs Chris up.
This is a great fight, y'all. This is even better than the last fight. Great fight. And Chris just switched to southpaw. I don't know why he did that. He lands a right. He's landing combination. He's starting to take control of this fight again. Thirty seconds, thirty thirty five seconds left. Chris is getting backed up. He's back against the ropes again. These rounds are crucial for him, man. He, he's giving this round away. He gave the round away. Twenty seconds left to go. Jose is 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 down, you know, but he ain't out, man. He's he he's gonna pull off this round. He's gonna take this round. Chris started out fast, but he got clipped, and he's not taking back over. Got to keep it real, man. Chris, Chris, Chris lost that round. Chris lost that round, man. Jose is still up. Chris lost that round. Yeah, man. Ah, oh, man. So I got Chris Colbert. Uh, I got Jose up five rounds to three. Plus he scored a knockdown in the first round. So Chris needs these last two rounds to even make it debatable. Because <clears throat> if the judges is looking at it the way I'm looking at it. If Chris don't score a knockdown. Even if he wins the next two rounds, he lost the fight. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Chris is is fighting though. He's fighting. He's into, but he gotta he gotta go. He gotta push harder. He gotta push harder than this continuously. These last two rounds, he needs to give everything up right now. He's starting out fast though. So far in this round, mind you. Steve Farhood, unofficial scorecard, has it scored 77 to 74 for um Valenzuela. The same way I got a score. He gave him the same rounds and everything. So I don't know how the judges to see. Oh, nice left hand from uh from Jose, but Chris is in control so far. He's coming out fast. Chris got a fight like he needs to stop a stoppage. When he needs to, he has, he has to fight like he needs to stop Valenzuela. Oh, big, nice Lee left hook lands for Chris Colbert. Valenzuela slant, uh, lands a left hand to the body. Almost halfway through the knife here. So far as a Chris Colbert round so far. Valenzuela is still ble uh, bleeding through the nose, but he's still in the fight. Yo, Soccer Training Club, thank you for the um, donation, bro. It says salute, salute champ, salute to, uh, salute champs in the chat. Slow round from both, but Chris is a little bit more active this round. 45 seconds in the ninth. Slow round from both, though. I mean, they both had some big rounds recently. Back and forth. Valenzuela is starting to walk him down. Chris is just peppering him up with little like 
jabs. He's touching them, but not big punches from no. No, nice uppercut and left hook lands for Chris. All right, ninth round done. I gave that one to Chris. I got four rounds to five for 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 Valenzuela. It's you know I don't know how the judges got it. The only way I look at it, man, to be honest, I think there was only one round that I felt was kind of close. I think that was maybe the fourth round, the third or the fourth round. I can't remember. But to be honest, man. I feel like Chris is losing, you know, and it's a 10 rounder, man. This is not 12 rounds. It's a 10 rounder. I don't know. I don't know. I have it five rounds or four. Let me know in the comments. What do you guys got to score so far right now? Tenth round, final round, y'all. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Something needs to happen. Nice right hook lands for Valenzuela. Again, Steve Farhart has it scored exactly the same that as I do. Nice jab from Valenzuela. Chris got to fight like he needs a knockout, in my opinion. He's showing a lot more heart than he did in the uh, Hector Garcia fight. Oh, two right hands land for Chris Cooper. He's showing a lot more heart, though, in this fight. He's fighting to the very end. Nice right hook lands for Valenzuela. Chris is more active this round so far. Very good fight, man. Very, very, very good fight. This could easily be fighting tonight. Depending on, depending on how the other fights go. Nice left hand to the body from Jose. Still anybody's around halfway through the first, the, the tenth. And there's no clear winner yet in this round. Any this round can go either way so far. Not much from either so far. Chris is a little bit more after it though. They're both landing little shots here and there. Nothing heavy, though. Nothing heavy has landed from either. Fifty seconds left to go. Something needs to happen for Chris. Something needs to happen for Chris. He just switched southpaw. Jose is being patient. He landed a nice jab just now. He's being patient. The pressure ain't on him to me. It's on Chris. He's doing a little bit better, but I don't know if it's going to be enough for him, man. Yeah, it's 20 seconds left, and I, I still feel, you know, even if Chris wins this round, you, you got to, like, go for it. Oh, Jose clipped him with a big right hand and then a left. Chris won the round to me, but Jose, Chris was winning the round, but Jose clipped him with a right and a left at the very end and buzzed Chris in the, the remaining three or four seconds left on the clock. You know, so I don't even know if that changes anything because that there was, wasn't much happening in the round. I think Chris was winning. Around based off activity, but I think Jose wins the fight just simply off the fact that 
he scored a knockdown in the first round. Outside of the first round, I think the fight was pretty much even. You know, very good fight, though. I love the fight. The fight was great. The fight was good. Yo, shout out to everyone in the chat, man. I know I haven't read that many comments because I've been doing this commentary. If you are in, if you're just getting in, please just smash the like button. Um, share the video if you can. Um, what are you guys saying in here? Furlong says this is a great fight. Absolutely. Flo says, I thought Ryo was much stronger. I expect him to KO Covert by now. Oh, this is these are earlier comments, so a few rounds ago. Young Hollywood says Chris showing heart, but ain't good enough. Brian says, never mind, Ryo doing good. Barry says Covert looked unbeatable two years ago. I wouldn't say unbeatable, but he looked very good though. I'll tell you one thing, there was a moment where people was trying to compare him to Shakur. <laughs> you know Patrick said Chris broke his eye I don't know about all that Ralph says Colbert won I don't think so I think uh, I think it's 5 to 5 but with a knockdown I think Valenzuela is going to win this one you know I think it's gonna be one. It's gonna be like ninety five, ninety five, or ninety six, ninety five for Valenzuela. What's up, El Avil twenty seven on Dominicano in El Bronx, my man. Yeah, it was a good fight, man. All right, we were in scorecards. I I'm I got it 96-95 for for Ryle. Unanimous decision. Ninety five ninety four. Or maybe I said the numbers wrong. What? They all three judges had a ninety five ninety four for Chris. I don't know. I don't know. Chris is Ryo's in his face, like yo. Chris saying we can run him back. I don't know about all that. Damn, son. Yo, what, yo, Chris trying. Chris is saying, let's run it back. Nah, Chris ain't win that. I'm sorry. Yeah, Chris ain't win that, man. Chris won. <laughs> yeah, they pulled up hard, son. Hold on. If you score the score up, that. They had it six rounds to four, then. See if he said, I'm from Brooklyn, and even I know he lost. <laughs> I thought it was five to five, so I can't claim robbery if it's five to five. There was one debatable round for me, and I think it was either the third or fourth. I can't remember what it was. So I can't say robbery, but I don't think Chris won. 
Then they booing them. They ain't even let him talk. I had it five to five. So I can't. You you guys know my score already. They got to run it back, though. I think Valenzuela should have won because of the knockdown. Chris talking crazy, too. Like, he, yo, he called him a sore loser and all that. Hey, Chris talking crazy like he definitely won, bro. Like, oh, they cheering for Jose. Damn, I know he tight right now. He got two L's on back to back on his record. I mean, he got a Mexican crowd in there, so. Damn, son. <laughs> they got to run that back. It was a good fight, though, but. I don't think Chris won the fight, though. That's crazy. That's crazy. I don't feel any... You know what it is? I'm quiet because this fight did not make me think anything other than what I already thought bone into the fight. This fight does not make me feel any different about the two of them. It they they it, they're dead even. Like they just, I don't want them to fight anybody above this level right now. I'm dead serious. Like, I want to see them stay where they at right now. Because I know, like Chris Colbert recently, not too long ago, he was talking about Frank Martin and and having they was thinking about having that fight. I don't want to see that fight. Frank Martin will destroy Chris Colbert right now. You know, and Jose needs to, he need to work on his craft right now because he had moments in this fight for sure. But I still don't think he's ready for that level yet, you know. This is crazy. It's crazy. Damn, I know a lot of people thought they was going to get that money. Damn, yo. The judges screwed, y'all. I was not expecting that. All three judges had it 95-94. All three? I was shocked. All three had it for quote. They, it wasn't even like split decision or majority decision or draw or none of that. Nah. Yo. How many of y'all thought Colbert won? Let me know. I see like maybe one or two of y'all maybe. How many of y'all thought Colbert won that? Let me know right now. Who had Colbert winning? Me me and uh, Steve Farwood had it completely identical except the last round. He gave Valenzuela the last round. I thought Colbert was winning the last round, except the last three or four seconds. Nicholas said he had it watching. Thank you, bro. Thank you for the uh, donation. Nicholas said he had it. He started watching the sixth round. He had it up for Chris. I mean, that don't really count, though, man. You know, because it it was you know those were the rounds where Chris was doing better. You know, he got dropped in the first round. I thought halfway through the first the half, first half. What's his name was definitely winning. Who who had Chris winning the fight though here? I feel bad because that was a really good fight, and now it just spoiled the fight. You know, that just spoiled the fight. Like it just it just spoiled the fight, yo. We had a good fight, and the, judge, and the judges, like, not one of them thought Valenzuela won. <laughs> like, not one of them even thought at least one of them thought it was a draw. Like, all three had it the same. I thought it was going to be all three had it the same for Jose. I didn't know they was going to do – I didn't know he was going to do them dirty like that. All right, but what's y'all scorecards, yo? 
All right, if nobody here had uh, Chris winning, what's your score? Or like, what's the scorecard y'all had? At least tell me that. We know there's a knockdown. Well, I mean, round for round, you had it four rounds to six for Jose, seven to three. Like, what do y'all have a score? I, I'm just curious because I want to know what y'all got. Nah, seriously. <laughs> for a long time, I had Chris winning 10 0. Nah, real, like, for real. Vic says six to four for Colbert. Ralph said he edged it for Colbert. CB said 96 93. Yeah, but for who, though? EK said Chris won like three or four rounds. DJ had it, said he had it for a draw. Ralph, uh, same as, oh, you, you already told me. Red says 73 for sure. For who, though? I don't know who y'all talking about. 96 93 for Venezuela. Okay. I mean, I had a 5 5, man. Ross says, I mean, there's a lot of y'all Crobert dudes in here. Not a lot, but it's like at least three or four of y'all in here. Eric says 7-3 for Valenzuela. EK said Cobra almost got knocked out every round. Nah, not every round, but every round, like, he clearly lost. I felt like he got hurt in the round. Jesus had a 5-5 with a knockdown edging it for Ryo. All right. Good fight, though. I don't want that to take away from the fight, though. Like, I, I thought the fight was really, really good. I thought both fights so far was good. Case study says Colbert won, in my opinion. So it was a lot of y'all. Well, y'all go ahead and argue with each other. Let y'all argue in the comments about who won that fight. All right, in the meantime, who's winning this next fight between Spencer and Ramos? See, this is my problem with Colbert and the decision. Like, even though I feel like the fight was close, I can't say, like, Chris won. I can't watch that fight and feel like Chris won the fight. He got hurt so many times in that fight. You know, like he got dropped and he got hurt so many. I, I can't see that fight and say that he won the fight. You know, like even in scoring the rounds five to five, I felt like the rounds that I gave to Jose was much clearer than the rounds that I gave to Chris. That's just how I look at it. RS, thank you for the donation. I appreciate it. Yo, I just can't say that Chris won. I felt like the rounds that Jose won was so clear, you know, just about every round that I gave to him was clear where Chris, you know, there was rounds that I gave to him, but I, he, like he never really hurt Jose like that. He might have buzzed him once or twice, but I don't know. DK said Chris got hurt every other round. Yeah, See, I... That's why I, I can't give it to Chris. Chris can't. Chris ain't won that fight, bro. Thanks, RS. Appreciate it. Much love from Texas. So we got the next fight, y'all. But we got the next fight. You got Ramos or Spencer. Who y'all got, man? Oh, the, I didn't even, you know what? 
I need to check what the odds were today. I think Spencer is going to win a decision. That's just my pick. They're both really good, though. You know, but Spencer might get exposed because I've been wondering about him for years now. Been waiting for him to step up. But if he's going to get exposed, it's going to be this fight right here. But I think he's going to pull out a decision win. But he's tough, too. He could crack. He could crack, but I think Spencer is going to win a decision or Ramos might stop him. Or he just might outwork him. All right, let me lower this down a little bit. This one is it's tough, though. This is a tough one. This is another tough one to call. Oh, so none of y'all drinking with me? Y'all just going to leave me hanging by myself? It's messed up. Damn, we've been, a, we've been on for three and a half hours already. It doesn't feel like it. Any of y'all seen Creed? Y'all seen Creed 3? I was supposed to do a review on that. DJ asked me if the Crawford and Spence rumor is true. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea, man. You know, I don't even talk about that fight no more. I don't talk about the fight no more, man. Let me know when you guys announced it and have a press conference and have a face-off and a location with tickets sold. I don't want to hear about it. If not, you know. You know, they make it look good on Twitter, but I want a real, like, confirmation, you know? I don't want to hear they're in the works or they're close to being done. I don't want to see no tweet saying that we're close. I don't want to see none of that. Josh said he having tacos. Creed 3 was good. Creed 3 was good. It was the it was better than the second one in my opinion. It was a little better than the second one, but I still feel the first one was the best one in my opinion. Yeah, they postponed the fight, man. It, it seemed like every good fight really get like every really good fight gets postponed at least once. <laughs> Sabrina said, I feel your wave. I feel it sucks when you get hopes up for a fight only for it not to happen. Yeah, I don't even like I'm not even checking for it. CB said it was really good. Yeah, it was really good. What's up, Aquaya? What's good with you? Aquaya's checking in. EK says he hopes the judges gets tossed out. I don't think that's going to happen. Charles says, Cran Ginger Baca. All right. My man, my man, my man, Charles Edward Cheese is always with me with the drinks. Yeah, Ward didn't win that first fight. But I don't want to go down into that rabbit hole. Ward came back, but he didn't win that fight, in my opinion.
give Colbert Keyshawn Davis for his next fight. That's interesting because, again, like, I feel like, well, first of all, I'll be leaning towards Keyshawn. But Keyshawn hasn't fought anywhere nearly as good as neither one of those fighters, in my opinion. But I'll probably be leading towards Keyshawn. Yo, a yo, Ray, yo, Ramos is huge. Just telling you that. Like I told y'all that earlier because he's a really, really big 154 pounder. But them standing next to each other, Ramos looks like he's at 160 at least. Spencer doesn't look anywhere near this guy's size. Ramos is a southpaw, too. Spencer is in for a real fight, man. I've been waiting to see this what this kid will do in a real fight. Let's see it. What Spencer got to deal with is when Ramos really get the pressure going... I want to see how he handles that. So far, he's doing a good job at, at staying at range, but I mean, the fight just started. Looks like Ramos is just filling him out. Damn, these two look like they're two completely. Ramos look like he's two divisions above this guy. Nice uh, lead left hook to the body. Spencer's doing all the light, light shots for for now. Are you guys looking? Yo, do you guys see the, the size difference between these two? This is crazy. This is a 10 rounder, by the way. This is another 10 rounder, so... So now, like, Spencer's, like, kind of got him against the ropes, and they're, like, he's kind of, like, smothering his punches, but he's not really doing anything. Nice right hook from uh, Ramos landed. What What is going on? What's up with all this extra holding from Spencer? Yeah, I can't believe this. I can't. I'm just, I'm just shocked at the the size difference between these two. What is yo? Spencer got clipped, and he's down. He got clipped with a left hook. He's down. He, he, he's. I guess. I guess this is why they haven't been putting him in there with nobody. Ramos is trying to finish him off. And they're both trading. And Spencer's going to get knocked out. He's he's fighting a terrible fight right now. He lucky the round is over. He's he's grinning and all that, but yo, that's not cool. This is, this is exactly why. Oh, I guess I was wrong. Wh whoever you guys are called Ramos, I guess this is why they ain't put him in there with nobody. What was that? What was he doing at that point? This fight shouldn't have been your first step up. It shouldn't have been your first step up fight. He doesn't know what he's doing. All right, we're in round two. I mean, we already know who won round one. I mean, um, I don't know. 
First of all, I didn't. I knew. I knew Ramos was big, but I didn't know he was this much bigger than Spencer. I mean, Spencer is usually fighting just above one fifty four. So now Spencer's fighting on his back foot. I'm curious to see a one. I'm curious to know what his corner told him. And let me tell you something. Ramos hasn't even got warmed up yet because I I've seen how he could fight. Spencer got to get out of that corner. Nice combination lands for Spencer, though. But he got to stay. He's throwing a couple of combinations around the guard, which is cool. He got to be careful, man. He's already been dropped. Ramos is looking like um, Joe Joyce right now, just big and just coming in. And he's throwing that hammer jab thing, like you know, like Joyce do. Ramos is walking him down, just stalking him, throwing jabs. Spence is using that shell and moving his head, and he's staying out of the way for most of the punches. He's doing a good job defensively this round, but. Oh, now he's back in the pocket with Ramos. I I'm trying to understand what exactly is the game plan here. Because now he's in the pocket and he's getting clipped. What is he doing? Oh, this ain't no fight. This guy, this guy is, he's hes not it. What is he doing? He's getting pieced up again. Oh, he's getting he's getting tore up now. What is he? Yo, can somebody tell me in the in the comments what what is Joey Spencer doing right now? Oh my god. Why is he in the pocket with Jesus Ramos? Why? This guy looks like he's at least 20 pounds, at least 20 pounds over him. 20, 25 pounds. What is he doing? Oh my God. This this is this this fight is this guy's. I don't want to see this guy fight no more. Now I know now I understand why they never put him in there with nobody all this time. Are you guys watching this fight? This is crazy. Can we get a knockout for we can see the so we can get the the final fight, please? Cause this, I just, hold on. This, this, this dad, his coach is telling him. He's telling him, box with him, step around him. He's standing right in front of him with his high guard up, just in close range. Like, what are you doing, bro? This is crazy. What are these guys doing? All right, we're in round three, man. I, I've gave I've given the first two rounds to. Ramos again. This is a ten round fight. And you know, Ramos, he's coming in, he's just marching forward with a high guard. And you know, he's doing he's been doing a good job countering and, and hooking with with Joey. But Joey's back in the pocket with him again, and he's marching in closer. And I'm trying to understand what is he trying to do here? You know, like what is he doing? Now I understand why they waited so long to put him in there with somebody real.
You know, I remember when I was like, yo, what are we going to get him in uh, Lorenzo Simpson truck? And I'm like, what's what's up with that fight? You know, they both seem to be moving in the same. Like, let me let me look him up. What is Lorenzo Simpson doing? Because I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him a fight with him in a minute. Oh, he fought in October. Spencer is standing right in front of y'all. If y'all not watching this fight, Spencer is standing right in front of Jesus Ramos. Close range. He's not moving around. And he's trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a guy that looks like he's at least two divisions bigger than him. This is crazy. Like Spencer, Spence looks like a, a legit 154 guy. And Ramos looked like a damn mid, super middleweight. Uh, I can't wait this fight's over. Rhoda said, we are here for the main event. This is a first stinker of a fight. This is the first one. We got two good fights so far, so I'm not mad. If we could get three out of four fights, then I'm, I'm happy. Oh, nice combination from Ramos. Super Zav Judah in the building. Roly Romero is in the building. Jamal Charlo in the building. Jamel Charlo in the building. Oh, they cheering hard heavy for Deontay Waller. All right, we in round four. I ain't give Joey Spencer a round, and I don't plan to. If something changes, I'll be sure to let y'all know. But the way he fighting... I can't give him around. And I still feel like Ramos is taking it easy. Like, Ramos is still fighting him with respect. You know, like, he's still, like, he's being defensive. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's not, like, just let's walk him now and just making it a slugfest. He's fighting with a lot. Like, he looked like he's sparring. And Joey looked like he, I don't know what he's doing. You know, I still don't feel like Ramos is going that hard. Like I see him, I seen him go harder than this. All right, so listen, we got we got a ton of people in here, man. Who you got winning the fight? You know, like I know we were talking about it earlier. Y'all got Plant or Benavides? And is it is it going to be by unanimous to, uh, a decision or you got a knockout? Let me know in the comments. Who do you guys got, Plant or Benavides? Spencer's getting touched up on the, on the ropes right now. He's getting hit by a lot. He's taking a lot of shots from uh, Ramos right now. Who you guys got? Centurion says Benavides by unanimous decision. What's up, the race of Angel? What's good with you? EK says he's rooting for Plant. Josh says Benavides by KO. Robert says rooting for Plant, but leaning towards Benavides. Plant, Plant, Benavides, TKO. 
Benavidez plant. Oh. Oh, they going at it, y'all. Ramos is beating him up, bullying a little kid in the corner. Ron, yo. Spencer just leaning on the ropes, letting this big guy just beat him up. Yo, there's a lot of plant people here. There's a lot of people that think Plant is going to win tonight. Mario says Plant by KO. I saw that was going to be my next question. How many of y'all got? I see AO got Plant by KO. Yeah, Spencer's getting beat up every round. He's starting to see it. You, you're starting to see it in his face. All right. Rodrigo says, we planting the seed. Pito says, Benavides by late stoppage. EK says two more rounds like this and his corner should stop the fight. Sabrina says, I'm rooting for Plant. I think his new team and new trainer has benefited him and I think he'll win a decision. Got you. How do y'all feel about the weigh-in? How do you feel about David's look? You know, because everybody's been talking about, you know, how he has abs and all of that. I mean... I like the fact that he came in and made weight in early in the week. You know, I mean, he made weight. He was 166. Um, I think I think it's mixed because I think I think he's definitely in the best shape. But I also think he was a little drained just just looking at his face. You know, but I think he's going to look much bigger tonight, you know. Because at the weigh-in, it looked like Plant, you know, looking so much more muscular and stuff. It looked like Plant looked bigger, even though he's shorter. But I think tonight on the actual fight, Benavides is going to look bigger than Plant, you know? Barry says the closer the... I mean, Barry says the closer the fight has come, the more chances I'm giving Plant. Well... I always thought Benavides was going to win. And then when I looked at the, when I did film study, I started being less sure, you know, less sure to a point where I had to hedge my bets. You know what I'm saying? Yo, what if Benavides stopped something like four or five rounds? Oh, big left hand from Ramos. Yo, Spencer got to get off the ropes. He doesn't know what he's doing. He got to get off the ropes. He's not slick enough to get away out of those shots from those shots on the ropes like this. This is just crazy. Like, what? He's just beating up like random dudes just to get to this point, just to get beat up. Ramos is really like he's toying with him and beating him up at the same time. Rodrigo, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Rodrigo says, just want to, to let you know, Boxing Wave, you and Sean from Fight Hype are my favorite commentators on boxing. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, By the way, um, Ramirez and Kome is about to start. The cold main event just is is about to end now.
Johnny says, um, player finished the rail with a good punch, but he is not a huge puncher at super middleweight. Well, you know, if he gets a knockout tonight, we'll see. All right, we on what we on? We I mean, I mean, I'm not scoring. I mean, I'm just giving every round to Ramos. You know, I'm not like something big needs to happen for me to give Spencer a round here. You know, as long as he's just leaning on the ropes, not moving, not doing anything. You know. Mario, thank you. He says I trust your analysis and commentary more than the ring announcers. They are always crazy bias one way or, or another. I can predict the announcers being pro plant. Um well, first of all, thank you for trusting me. Um, I'm not sure if they're gonna be pro plant tonight. You know, I mean, I would think that if Benavides wasn't a PBC fighter and he didn't have the you know, the crowd and, uh, you know, everybody's in there supporting really Benavides there, you know? So I'm not too sure about that. I don't know. Barry says, uh, notice a lot of guys that sparred with plants that he's more effective than peep stink. Yeah, I mean, listen, we got a little bit of time left to go, so we'll we'll see it in a little bit. You know, we won't have to talk about it no more. Um, Plant right really might be extremely good tonight, but what if David, you know, just stops him quickly? You know, much earlier than Canelo. I mean, I don't think that's gonna happen. I think he is going to stop Plant, but I don't think it's going to be early. You know, I don't think, you know, Plant, I think Plant is tough. I think he's going to give David issues, you know, and I don't know. We just got to wait and see. I'm still trying to figure out Joey's plan here, you know, because he's coming forward and he's closing the gap on Ramos. And I'm like, all right, okay, you're tough. Like, you're coming forward, but you're literally fighting his fight. You know, where's the jab from outside? You know, where are the setups from outside? Where are the counters from outside? It's like, it's almost like he doesn't feel comfortable. He's he's basically fighting like Coley Crowley earlier against the other Ramos. He's fighting like Cody Crowley. But he just can't do what Cody was doing. And he's doing not doing nearly the amount of punches. He's taking a punch. I mean, he has hard though. He is taking a punches, so he's still in the fight. He hasn't been dropped since the first round. He hasn't been badly hurt since the first round. So I'll give him, I'll give him that. Showing a preview of Tank and Ryan. Who you guys got for that one? Who do you guys got for Tank and Ryan? Tank or Ryan? Unanimous. I mean, um, I keep saying unanimous. Decision or, or knockout? I got Tank by knockout. Centurion, yes, I do think the bad blood will continue. I don't think... You know, if Plant wins, he's going to taunt David just like he did Darrell. And it's same with Darrell. They really hate each other, so. I have Tank by um, knockout, though.
Spencer's coming forward, and he's uh he's letting his hands go. Damn, imagine Tank got knocked out by Ryan. That would be crazy. Imagine? Oh, my God. Oh, combination from oh Ramos caught him. Oh, man. Joey is taunting him like, give me more. But, I mean, bro. Come on, man. He's just beating you up. Oh, nice shot from uh, Joey. Nice shot. Jay Roos got... What happened? The ref stopped it. Or the ref... Or the, 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 they throw it. Oh, I looked down for one second, y'all. Hold on. They stopped the fight, though. They stopped the fight. I, don't, I just want to see who stopped it, though. I don't know if it was the ref or the corner. But Joey was taking a lot of punishment just now. Joey got dominated. I'm glad it stopped, though, because I, I just kind of didn't want to watch it no more. <laughs> I didn't want to watch it no more. I was I was done. They needed to stop it for me. Daniel says he's going with Ryan because of Joe Goosen. And I think Tank will be surprised by Ryan's speed. I don't think it's a surprise. I think Ryan's speed is... I mean, the dude got a punch where we can't see it in real time. Literally has a punch that we can't see. You know? Aaron, if the guy can make weight, it is what it is. You know, I think you mentioned her, and, and thank you for the donation, but I think you mentioned her earlier. At the end of the day, her fought Laura. And even though her got the decision... Where a fight where many people believe that Laura still won. Her that's never been the same since that fight because he took so much punishment from the much smaller guy. You know? And it's about skills. And unfortunately, Joey was not only the smaller man, but he lacked the skills to compete. You know, he wasn't following the instructions of his corner. He didn't have the skills. All right. He fought the he fought Ramos's fight. Yeah, it was a corner that stopped it. It is what it is. You know, like listen, the guy is bigger. There's a lot of people that are bigger and they still get their ass kicked. You know, we're not gonna put it on on that. I mean, what did what did Joey do in this fight that made you think that he had a chance? Like, what did he do against the bigger man? What was the strategy? I didn't see any strategy at all. You know? It's just a, it's just a poor... It was just a poor performance from Joey. He basically gave the guy with the advantages away. He gave it to him. You know, you fight a guy that's a little bigger than you, got to fight smarter. I didn't see that. He fought dumber. And I've seen him fight before, guys that are a lot less dangerous, and him fight box better than that, you know? I'm hungry.
said, is this an all WBC guy? I, I don't know. Is it? Do I like the national? No, I could do without him. But I'm used to him now because it gives that feel of a super fight, like the main event, you know? Not a super fight, but a main event. I want to see Ram I, I want to see Ramos against Fundora. How about that? That's what I want to see. How do y'all feel about that fight? I want to see Fundora and Ramos next. Let me see if he calls anybody out. Hold on. Yeah, I, I just I don't understand the game plan of Joey in this fight. What are you doing in the booth with this guy? It's like a professional boxer is fighting a professional kickboxer, and the boxer is going in with kicks. He's trying to win with kicks alone. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, you are literally fighting a guy that likes that kind of fight, and you're fighting him the way he fights. It doesn't make sense. Like we're not gonna put no blame on size. It's size is always gonna be a factor. Size is a factor for the main event. You know, wait till we see how bigger Benavides is gonna look tonight. Plant is gonna look for his skills to win. He's gonna use his skills to try to win. He go standing there and brawl like pitcher plant coming out and just try to stick in a phone booth with Benavides the whole fight. It's not gonna happen. You'll never see that. Fundora would be a good fight because uh I actually like Ramos's chances against Fundora because Fundora is just defensively, he's flawed. I think Ramos got way better defense and, you know, he can punch too. You know, I know Fundora is like extremely tall, but Ramos is big for 154. You know what I'm saying? That's a good fight. I can't wait to, uh, I hope they made that fight. That would be a great fight. All right, well, I was hoping that Ra uh, Ramirez and Comey started earlier than this. Um, but it looks like they're both going to be on track and, and both fights are going to be on simultaneously. So I'll definitely do my best to cover a little bit of the Ramirez fight while watching Plant and, uh, and Benavides. The main event is on next, if you're just joining us. All right, it's on next. Uh, we're just waiting for it to start. The uh, The co-main event just ended on both cards. So we're just waiting for the uh, main event to start. So I'm, I'm assuming, you know, after you, the ring walks, the national anthems, um, I think both fights should start within the next 15, 20 minutes or so, you know, depending on how long they're going to wait. I mean, it's already midnight, you know, so we should be getting a, we should be getting a fight going soon, you know. I 
All right, let's do a quick roll call, man. Where everybody is from, let me know in the comments. Where are you from? You know, what city you from? What country you from? What part of the city? You know how we do on Saturday nights. Let's do a roll call where, real quick. Let everybody in the comments, let me know where you're from so we can shout you out before the fight begins. All right, we got San Diego in the building, Seattle, Australia. We have uh, Bakersfield, Cali, Douglas, Arizona is in the building. Uh, Tanzania is here. Staten Island is here. South Carolina, another San Diego is here. Toronto, San Antonio, Texas is here. Houston is here. Irvine, California, another San Diego, Austin, Louisville, Oh, damn, I lost you. I lost you real quick. Hold on. Hawaii is here. Newfoundland is here. London, Ontario, Canada. San Antonio. Ghana is here. Wow, Ghana. Wow, I haven't seen Ghana here in a minute. The Bay Area and Cali is here. San Diego. A lot of Cali people. Ghana by way of UK, okay? Detroit is here. Florida, Indianapolis. Albuquerque, Baltimore. Seneca Falls. Vegas is here. Too lazy to attend the fight. <laughs> Jacksonville, Florida. Cleveland, Ohio. Ohio. Brooklyn's in the building. All right. The Bay here, New York. What part of New York, Zach? Don't do that. Providence, Rhode Island is here. D.C., Washington, D.C. is here. All right, ZP, we get it. Brooklyn is here. <laughs> Ulster County. Okay, okay, I got you. I know I'm familiar with up there. You right outside of Orange County. Shout out to everyone that's here. Shout out to people from um from around the world that's here. Compton's in the building. Yusef, thank you, my brother, for the donation. He says Philly in the house. Y'all seen that George Foreman trailer? I seen it. I just want to wait and see how the movie is, man. I'm not crazy about the trailer, to be honest. You know, so I'm I'm waiting to see the actual movie before I, you know, I'll give you my review. Um, but thank you for the donation always. You you're definitely one of my biggest uh, uh supporters on the channel. All right, Colorado's in here, Chicago's in the building. Daniel says uh, he's from New York City, trained at the old Gleason's gym in Brooklyn, now live in L.A. Cool, cool, cool. Joey's from Philly. Philly's in the building. Shout out to Philly. All right. I love Philly. Uh, you know, I, I like to go to Philly every now and then. My sister lives out there. I spent New Year's Eve in Philly. All right, we almost up, man. Almost up for this fight. What's up, Australia? What's up, everyone from Australia? Virginia Beach is here. Uh, Showtime not playing around with the time, man. They doing an announcer, and they, they're about to have the fighters come out. ES, ESPN is a little slow tonight. What's up, uh, Andy? What's up, Tennessee's in the building? What's happening? DJ said, can Plant ever get Canelo again? If he has a phenomenal performance tonight, yes. Possibly, yes. Let's go, man. So no more, no more previews, man. Let's get just give me the fight. 
How many of y'all pay for the fight? Let me know in the comments while we're waiting. Did you guys pay for the fight or are you guys streaming it? Let me know in the comments. Did you pay for it? Did you stream it? Let me know. Let's see. What do you guys got? Black Cat said they said they paid. Flow job. Flow Jab said they paid. EB paid. Jesus paid. Zach says stream. The no man, the no man says uh, not worth it. Michael said my cousin paid for it. Mario paid. John Doe stream. Hawker says, nope, they're watching me. <laughs> cool. Yusef says they paid. Got to support these kind of fights. Hunter said they're listening to me. White Whitehurst comment says they're at a motel out of town. You're my eyes. Got you. Rocket said the way the ops is on here, so I can't say it. <laughs> All right, Benavides is coming out now. He's doing his... Yo, they... Yo. He's already halfway to the ring. They, I love this. Yo, I love when the ring walks is like this. Please stop wasting my time. Let's get this show going. On the other hand, ESPN, Richard Comey is, yo, why do you guys really absolutely have to have your fights at the same exact time? Jesus. All right, but we already know the priority tonight is David Benavides and Caleb Plant. I will be, I will be updating you guys with, with Kome and uh, Ramirez, okay? All right. All right, let's get it, y'all. Let's get it. Let's get it. I'm starving, too, by the way. Like, that's the thing about doing these long lives, man. It's been four hours. I'm ready to eat, man. <laughs> Shout out to everybody just just che checking and listening and, and don't have access to the fight. Thank you for supporting me, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, I know nobody's watching the Kome. Who who's listening for the Kome and Ramirez fight? Let's be honest. Who's here to listen to that? to that fight who's here for that fight anyone here specifically for that or 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 are more interested in that fight than this benavides plant fight is anyone here that's like you know here maybe some ramirez fans i feel like a lot of the ramirez fans are are going to be here to uh support david benavides more you know I haven't had no one's asked me about the Ramirez Kome fight at all this week. Not and then no one has even asked me, you know, what's my prediction? You know, I kind of just did one just off the strength that I just want to cover the fights. But not one person all week asked me about this fight, to be honest. You know. I think Ramirez lost a lot of uh respect because of the whole pro gay fight, you know. Just going on it. I don't. I don't think that live did him any justice. And he kind of made like he made it seem like pro grade wasn't on his level as far as like money and all of this stuff. And I think it rubbed people the wrong way. You know. What's up, Fabian? Dubai's in the building. What's good, Watts Loke? Oh, snap. Plan coming out to Eminem. I don't know, man. I'm hyped for the fight. <laughs> this fight got me kind of nervous. I don't know why, but it do. It got me nervous, man. I feel like it got me nervous on both ends. 
honestly, you know, because I just don't want it to be a like a quick knockout from either side. That'll be crazy. Like I want it to be a good fight. I just don't want it to be no like domination. Because if that happens, then the fans of that fighter is gonna be like, see, I told you what's his name was a bum. I told you he was gonna knock him out. I don't want that to happen. I want it to be a good fight. I don't care who wins. I really don't care who wins. I mean, I care in the sense that I want to make my money on the bet, but I don't care about who like really wins, you know, as far as like fans. Like, I don't care. I just care about it. I don't want nobody to get knocked out or get smoked quick because then they're going to be like, yo, I told you what's his name was overrated. I told you, you know, your boy plant is trash. I told you Benavides was overrated all this time. I don't want to hear nothing from nobody. Seriously. <laughs> uh, I bet for um plant straight up hedge. Or, no, I bet for Benavides by KO or TKO. Hedge with plant straight up. But I put more money on Bet Benavides winning by the, um, taking a knockout win. Like a late, but I mean like a late, you know, the prediction, I'm like, I'm expecting like a late stoppage. Like like people been saying like this dude's going to walk through plant and stop him early. I've been getting a lot of comments and feedback from people and they've been saying that. So if that happens, oh man, like Canelo going to have to fight him after that. But if plant just knocks him out. Like that would be crazy because nobody thinks Plant got power. Even with the D, uh, what's the name, Darrell knockout, people don't really think he got like real power. But yeah, I'm expecting David to stop him, like like later in the fight, like after like nine, no earlier than the ninth. Like even if he stops him earlier than Canelo, I don't think it's gonna be that much earlier. You know, I think maybe a little earlier or, or around that same time. But Plant did well against Canelo. That's what I'm saying. Like. Plant got stopped, but I feel like Plant did better than Smith. I know Smith went the distance, but Plant did fought better. He did better than Saunders. You know, like, I don't know. Anyway, Ramirez and Comey about to start, too. Oh, man, this got me nervous, yo. This fight got me nervous. Damn, no, none of y'all care for Rim Ramirez's fight. All right, round one for Kome and Ramirez is starting. I, again, like I told y'all, I'm going to keep my eye on it, but you already know, like, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not covering the fight over this fight. So, but I'm going to keep my eye on it and let y'all know if anything go down. And they they both going, they going at it. They both trading, y'all. Oh, they both trading. Oh, wait, hold on. Kome caught, caught. Oh, oh, wait, hold on. Oh, no, this is a fight, y'all. They both going... Uh, somebody might get knocked out right away. Oh, 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 okay. Ramirez caught him. They both they both landed balls. I got... I got... I got it both... Oh, no. Comey looks in trouble. He's in the corner. Ramirez, they're both trying to get a knockout early. 
They both punching each. each uh, look like Ramirez. Ramirez is getting the better of him, but yo, as soon as the David Benavidez start fight start, I'm gonna let y'all know. But this this fight right here, somebody might get knocked out early. The way they looking right now. I put it, I put it, uh, Ramirez by KO Hedge by Komei. Very little on Komei by uh, KO. I'm expecting uh, Ramirez to win by stoppage. They're in the second now? Oh, okay, hold on. Let me update this then. This, this is behind on my arm thing. Way behind. Why are you guys so much farther ahead than me? I just refreshed it. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it's, I guess, I don't know. I'm on a commercial right now. Yeah, I don't know. I can't get it to speed up. Yeah, Benavides looks full now. I want somebody to get knocked out in the uh, Comey Ramirez fight. Oh, man. Benavides don't look that much bigger than Plant, man. They don't. He doesn't look that much bigger than Plant. Oh, I'm sorry. I did. Yo, I'm sorry. I'm in the third round of Come and Ramirez. So it is updated. All right. But I, I'll, I'll get back to y'all on that. Benavides don't look that much bigger, man. Plant looks stocky. He's shorter, but he looks a little fuller. Here we go. Everybody's on their feet. Let's go. Round one, y'all. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, y'all. Plant coming forward. Ben V is going backwards. Ben V is. Let's get it. Yeah, plans coming forward. Benavides lands a jab to the body. Another jab lands to the body of plant. Benavides is fighting a, a rangy fight so far. He's doing jabs and right hands from outside. Nice jab from nice jab to the body from plant. Nice feints from plant. All right, let's go. Let's get it. Come on, man. This fight is in the center of the ring, by the way. Benavides and, and Plant tie up, and Benavides is like pushing them off him and all that. Not much action though. This first round, we have a minute left in the first. Outside of a few jabs, not nothing really landed clean from either. Yeah, Benavides looks a little bit, you know. He got to relax a little bit. Now 
Nice jab from Benavides. 30 seconds left in the first. Huh. 20 seconds left. Oh, nice left hook from Benavides, but uh, Caleb blocked it. Benavides is starting to come forward a little bit, but the 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 fight is 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 in the center of the ring. Nice jab from Plant. Thought I thought Plant might have edged around, feeling out round. Benavides needs to relax. He seems a little tense, you know. And you know, I, I said he got a in a breakdown. Don't don't come in there with that angry energy. He has. He's showing that angry energy where Plant looks like he's just having another night in the ring. He needs to just clear his head and just box, bro. You know? He looks very tense. He can't let his emotions, like, this is, you're in the fight now. Like, there's no more of that, all that hatred and all that stuff. You got to fight smart, you know? Plant always go in there with these guys really angry at him. And then he fights like, he fights as if, you know, it's just another fight. But I gave Plant the first round. Again, a filling out round from both. But Plant seemed to be doing a little bit better. Combination. For a plant, he got through with a couple shots to the body. Another jab to the body from plant. Plant's doing a good job controlling distance. You know, Benavides is throwing jabs from outside, but he 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 hasn't really landed too much from the outside yet. You know, so far, David is, is fighting a rangy fight. He hasn't started the pressure at all yet. So he's fighting a, a pressure, like, you know, which is expected. Nice, nice little exchange between the two. I think uh, Plant might have got off on that one. Benavides is starting to come forward now. And Plant, this is the second time that Plant grabbed and held Benavides when Benavides got in close. Watch the hooks. That's the second time I've seen him trade hooks. I think Benavides might have caught him on that one. Right hand to the body from Plant. Plant's having another good round halfway through so far. Plant still seems to be in control. David tried to catch him with a left hook, but Plant, Plant blocked it with his right glove. Benavides is starting to walk forward now. Again, again, you know, Benavides got to relax. He got to relax. Even with the pressure, he got to relax. Plant's doing a good job stepping around him, using the ring. Nice uh, left hook to the body lands for Plant. Forty seconds left. Plant catches him with a right hand up top. Plant is just doing well using the ring so far, and Plant holds him again. Crowd boos when he does it, but it's working out for him so far. Benavides is starting to come in faster and faster, and he's lunging in with certain shots. Nice combination from Plant from from outside. Plant's just landing the jab relentlessly. Just he's just landing at will. Benavides is still trying to figure things out. Two rounds in a bag, man. And this fight is going exactly as predicted early. You know, Plant, the more experienced, the rangier fighter. Tank is in the building. And Plant is just continuously outboxing him from the outside. 
All right, David is lunging in a lot from the outside, not really connecting, getting a little frustrated. He needs to relax. You know, I don't know if he thought that this was going to be an easy fight early, but, you know, it's going to be hard to beat Plant on point when he's fresh. You just got to keep the pressure going, you know? What's up, Edgar? All right, but I have it 2-0 clear for Plant so far. Um. Oh, what's going on outside? Hope it's not going to mess up the fight. Everybody's up and looking up. I think there's another fight. Hopefully it doesn't distract the fighters here. Plant is... So Plant is his boxing, using his jab from the outside. Every now and then he will step in and throw a combination which is what he just did. Benavides caught him with a nice left hook. Benavides got to stop lunging in, though. Benavides is getting in close. Plant, he's putting the pressure now. He's trying to get closer. Close. Oh, nice hook lands for Benavides. Benavides is starting to be a little bit more aggressive now, and Plant is moving a lot more now. Plant steps in to hold him, and Benavides pushes him off. They both trade hook, but Plant caught him with that hook. Again, Benavides got to keep that right hand up. Another hook. Plant caught him with the second hook. Benavides swarms him, and they is trade, but Plant tries to hold him. Benavides is trying to fight him off. Plant still landed, but Benavides is having a better round this third round here. He's being a lot more aggressive and physical. Plant's back to using his jab. He steps and lands a combination. Benavides is walking forward with his hands up. Nice left hook counter from Benavides to lands. Yeah, Plant is starting to hold a lot, stepping in and holding once he gets a little uncomfortable. Leaping left hook for Benavides misses. 55 seconds left in the third round. Nice jab from Benavides. Benavides is having a good round. But Plant is still in there. Nice. Oh, nice. Nice left hand from Plant lands. Oh, nice. Another hook from Benavides lands during an exchange. Every time Plant leads to his right, he gets caught with a hook from Benavides. Twenty seconds left in the third. Very, very competitive. The most competitive round so far. Benavides caught him with a hand overhand right. Plant is starting to like. He's really getting pressured now. Really early. He's just, he's doing a lot of holding. Not a good look for Plant. Well, yeah, Benavides is starting to bother Plant with the uh, the pressure. Floyd Mayweather's in the building. Oh, um, round for uh, Benavides for me. I got it two to one. I gave Plant the first two. Benavides got the third. Sorry, I'm not doing much talk on the Comey uh, Ramirez fight. I see them still slugging it out in the sixth round. I figured that somebody would have gotten knocked out by the the, the the way that they're fighting each other. I would have I would have thought that someone had gotten knocked out so by now. Please, if you haven't already, please uh, smash that like button, man. Hit that like button for me. Do me that favor real quick. We are going into the fourth round. 2-1 for Caleb Plant.
Plant starts out the fight, he's trying to control the, the range here, keeping this, trying to keep the fight in the center of the ring. Going back to his jab, he's landed a good amount of jabs so far in the first 30 seconds of the, the fourth round. Haven't gotten anything from Benavides. He tried to counter plant with a left hook just now. feel like something's going to happen. Something big is going to happen with these two. Somebody's going to get caught with something big soon. Benavides caught him with a right to the body. Benavides is starting to put pressure on him again. Plant is starting to move. And he holds... Last round, the ref gave a harsh warning to Benavides because Benavides tries to fight out of the holes, and the ref wants to basically separate the two. Nice jab from Benavides, Lance. Nice lead left hook from Benavides. Not sure if it landed clean, though. Plant's right hand looked to be up, but good shot. Minute and 15 seconds left in the fourth. Still anybody's round. Nice round from Plant. I think Plant is leading this round. Dave is still putting on pressure, but not much landed this round from him. Plant's been doing better controlling the distance again with his jab. David lands two right hands to the body. 40 seconds left in the fourth. Let me lower this down some. Oh, they both trade hook. Plant got him. Plant got him. Benavides got caught. Plant had his right hand up again. What's going on? They held. I think ref is, is, is warning Benavides to watch his elbow. Plant got off a combination. David sticking his tongue at him. But, you know, Plant got his. Benavides got to keep his head in the game, man. He got to keep his head in the game. I, I gave that round to Plant. Three to one. Charles. It's good. Three to one. Three to one. David got the third, but oh, that was a low blow. It was a super low blow. I didn't even see that one. Uh Comey and Ramirez just started the seventh. According to the numbers, uh, Ramirez got a, a, a large amount of, of punches landed. And, and again, like I said in a prediction, Kome fades pretty heavy, you know, in the later rounds, um, and which isn't good, you know. So if he's, you know, according to the stats, if he's getting outlanded by that much, it's not a good way to go into the second half of the fight. But we are currently in the fifth round. The fifth round between Plant and Benavides just begun. I have it three rounds to one for Caleb Plant so far. Plant steps in. He's got Benavides on the ropes, and he's throwing the combinations to the body of Benavides so far. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Plant's being very slippery. Benavides is starting to follow him around. Plant is just trying to stay away. Benavides backs up and points at the, in the center of the ring like, yo, fight me right here. But to be honest, Benavides don't want to fight him right there. Nice shots from Benavides get through. Plant's like ducking and moving around, but I think one or two, two of those shots did actually catch him. I think Benavides needs to get him back 
against the ropes, you know? think Benavides is getting frustrated a little bit by Plant leaving his lead hand out like that. He just headbutted his glove. Nice combo from Plant. Benavides caught him with a left hook in the corner. Plant shakes his head like, yo, that didn't hurt. Plant taunting uh, Benavides. Benavides missed the shot. And Plant looked out into the crowd. A lot of taunting from both. Not enough fighting. Come on. Let's get some punches in, man. 45 seconds left in the fifth. Anybody's round still, in my opinion. Let's get some, let's get some, some action, man. Benavid is looking up at the clock. What's going on with that? 30 seconds left in the fifth. Yeah, it's like this 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 fifth round is just not neither one of them has done enough for me to give them the round. I don't know about that round. I I can't. I'm tying that round. I I can't give a win to that round. That that round was just it's just not enough for me. That could go either way. I said, let me write that down. So I don't want to forget my score. That 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 round can literally go to anybody. One plant, two plant, three David, four plant, five. It's a swing round. Thanks, Rollers. All right. Not for nothing, I don't think this is the kind of fight that David, something needs to change for David, in my opinion. Um, maybe Plant slows down, so that's a good, you know, that would help in his favor if Plant does slow down. But um, this this kind of fight like that that's happening right now, it's, it's not for Benavides, you know, overall. Plant is still staying out of range for the most part. And even though David does land some shots here and there, this is Plant's kind of fight. You know, I know we're in the sixth round, and I know there's still a lot of time left. Nice left hand from David. But Plant, this is his kind of fight. He's going to get hit now and then, but we got to – he needs to do something more than this. He needs to land something hard. Nice body shots from David lands. We need more of that. And he needs to stay in range. But his hands are down and he's walking forward towards Plant. Just got to hope he doesn't get caught with like a check left hook or something. And Benavides is not, not for nothing. I thought Benavides would be throwing more punches than this too. Even at this point. Halfway through the sixth row fall. All right. Benavides lunges in and shoots wild shots and miss both. Oh, David steps in, lands two left hands and a right. One minute left in the six. Ramirez and Comey were 25 seconds left in the eighth round. Nice 
Nice left, nice right hand from David. 30 seconds left in the six. Davis putting the pressure on Plant. Oh, nice short count, uh, short hooks from David. And I think D Plant is forced to hold on to him. That was the first time I feel like Plant. Whoa, 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 whoa. The ref is trying to break him up. Plant was trying to hold. That that bothered him. Good round for David. I gave it to David. David won that round. I think the pressure is starting to get to him. The ref is getting too. Does anybody else feel like the ref is getting too involved? You know, because, yo, David is getting held relentlessly. And he's trying to fight out of it. He's trying to fight out of the clinch. And the ref is jumping in and yelling and making him, like, listen to his instructions when they hold. Like, this reminds me of, of Anthony Joshua and Joseph Parker where the ref just got too involved in the fight. Like, you know, if a guy is going to continue holding you and you're trying to fight out of it, you're trying to be a pressure fighter and you're making a physical, why do you keep getting involved in the fight? You know? Um, so far, I have it. I have it three rounds for plant. No, I had two round wait, three rounds for plant, two for David, and one swing round. So it could be four to two or three to three, either way for me. Four to two for plant or three to one or three to three tie. Either or. All right, but we're in a round and we're in round seven. I'm 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 looking at Kome and Ramirez. From time to time. Comey's still in the fight. He's still in the fight. But. Ramirez looks like he's winning the fight. We're in the ninth round. Just under a minute into the ninth round. Uh, Unofficial scores. Nice shot from Plant. Yo, the ref, Kenny Bayless, got to get out of the way. He's, 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 Kenny Bayless is really getting on my nerves. And Benavides is starting to really pressure Plant hard. Kenny gets involved every time they hold, like, right away. Plant has a huge lump behind his head, on his head, behind his ear. A huge lump. I don't know if that was from a head, a headbutt or, a, like, a, a elbow or a punch. But he has a big knot on the, the side of his head. The left side of his head. Nice uh, counter right hand lands for Plant. Halfway through the seventh. Nice jab to the body from Plant. Benavides is slowing down. He's still following him, but he's not throwing enough. And he's still throwing. He's still reaching too much, but he's getting to him. He's trying to get on to him. Yo, get out of the way, Kenny. Get out of the way. Yo, Kenny. Yo, can someone tell me what Kenny Bettis is doing? Let them fight. This is a fight. This is what is he doing? He's ruining this fight. Oh, my God. Let the guys fight. Oh, nice left hand lands for Plant. Big left hand. Backs up uh, Benavides. Nice hook to the body from Plant, but Benavides lands a left up top and a right hand. 12 seconds left in the round. Now, this is another close round. I like what Benavides is doing. I like what Benavides is doing. You know, I think he still could be doing better. But I like, I like, I like David. David is, is starting to make it his fight. To be honest, I think that uh I think that uh Kenny is actually making the fight 
more difficult for him, you know? Benny David. Uh, they gave Kome uh on the the punch stats. Kome landed a lot the last round. You know, obviously I'm not watching it because I'm watching this fight. Come on, Kenny. Come on, man. Let them fight. It's a fight, bro. Yo, if somebody's holding, let let them hot. Like, it's too much. It's too much for me, man. I, I just can't. He's too involved. Benavides is still putting the pressure on him by following him, but not enough punches from him, though, to be honest. I still feel like I expected more um, volume from him. Nice left hook to the body. If you're going to get involved... Oh, oh! Big right hand lands for Benavides on the inside. That hurt plant. Benavides is all over him. Plants is trying to hold and survive. All right, this fight is starting to change, man. This eighth round, the fight is starting to change, y'all. Kenny is, Kenny, get out of here. You're literally helping the fighter that wants to hold. You're too involved in the fight. All right, halfway through the eighth here, and Benavides is having a, a big round. He's trying to cut, you know, he's... Oh, he caught a plant with a hurt right hand and plant desperately caught. Plant was a I, I'm sorry, I spoke too fast. Benavides caught him with a right hand, hurt plant. Plant looked like he was about to go down, but he held on and Benavides was swinging him around. Plant is hurt, y'all. Plant is hurt. And I think he's only in this fight because he's holding on. All right. Wait, wait, time. There's a cut. Oh, come on, Ben. Yeah. Oh my God, yo, what is up with this ref? There's a bad cut. All right, but what's going on? I can't see the cut. I, I can't see it yet. Katie Bayless is, 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 is a, oh, bad. There's a lot of blood on Plant's face. I don't know from what shot, though. Plant is just desperately holding. Plant offensively is done, y'all. I'm just letting y'all know. Plant at this at this point, Plant looks offensively done. Unless he lands a miracle of a shot, Benavides is is in his rhythm right now, and Plant is bleeding, and he's just trying to move. Wow, Plant is on survival mode, y'all. Already in the eighth round. Damn. Damn, David tried to follow him to his corner. I gave David the last three rounds. But this round was the most effective round. And to be honest, I think if it wasn't for Kenny, this might have started a round earlier. Plant tried to catch him with the left hook. That he landed on Darrell. They showing a slow motion. He tried to catch him. He's been trying to catch him, but David didn't, didn't get through. Winning the eleventh round between Ramirez and Comey, and Ramirez knocks down Comey. Comey is down early in the eleventh round. He's up. He's up though. He's up. He looks very tired. What's going on? All right. Oh, 
big left hook to the body of Benavides, and it's low. Benavides goes over to his corner, right in the right in the beginning of the round. All right, he's warning him. He said, "That's your warning. Don't do it again." Right, the first punch thrown, Plant hits him with a monster low blow. That's a veteran move, bro. <laughs> he knew what he was doing. Oh, there go another left hook to the body. Look, look low too. Big left hook from Benavides. Left hook. Left hook to the body from plant. Combination from plant. Benavides is marching forward. Plant still in the fight so far. Benavides is just trying to get to him. Benavides lands a right hand over the top. He's just marching towards Plant. Plant is just moving, trying to stay out of range, but Benavides lands a jab, a oh, big jab, lands a left hook on the inside. And this is why you got to let them fight on the inside because that's his advantage. And if Kenny Bayless wants to keep stepping in the mi in middle in between every time Plant is trying to hold, that's just Benavides is just taunting Plant, telling him to hit me, hit me. He's letting Plant hit him. Right hand lands from uh, Benavides. Oh, Kome got stopped. Kome got stopped. Kome is stopped, y'all. The 11th round. Good. I want some money. I told you guys. Benavides is destroying Plant right now. Plant's trying to hold on. 30 seconds left in the knife. Another hook from Benavides lands. Knife is coming to a close. Plant, bloodied nose. Battered, but he's still in the fight. He's still fighting. Another short right hand lands for Benavides. Good stuff. I haven't given a round to plant since, uh, well, clear round since the fourth. Uh, the fifth was a swing round for me. That could have gone either way. It's those short shots that is catching David. I mean, catching Caleb Plant from David. Well, I got my money for uh, got my money from uh, Ramirez. All right, we are we are in round ten. Plant starts out firing shots combinations. But Benavides is just walking through him. Come on, Kenny. Come on. Get out of here, man. Jesus Christ. Get out of the way.
Nice uh, quick right hand lands for Benavides. Benavides lands a hook, right hand plant responds with a, a short. Benavides, even with one free hand, because Caleb is trying to hold him again. He's hitting him with the free hand, and Caleb is just trying to hold him and stop him from throwing punches while they're holding. Kenny tried to get involved, but he let them, he let him, he actually let them keep fighting. Benavides is trying to just really put him away, but Plant is just, he's surviving because he, he's just holding. I just don't understand how Kenny can get involved in separating him in between the holds, but not warn him to stop holding. It just This is so much holding. This is something you, you warn and take a point eventually. Another another big left hook lands for Benavides. Another right hand for Benavides. Plan is just trying to hold. He's only he hit, he hit Plan in the back of the head, but Plan is taking a lot of punishment. But he's still in there, man. He's tough. Left hook to the body. Benavides is punishing Plan. Plan's just trying to hold him and stay in. He's getting punished bad. Plan is getting beat up bad, y'all. He's trying to stay in there. Listen, I give him a I give him a lot of credit. He is taking a beating. He's getting hit clean, and he's still in the fight. Right hook to the body lands. Benavides is just punishing him up top to the body. Plant is just walking forward with his high guard, and Benavides is just he's trying to just get him off of him. <laughs> Yeah, Plan didn't get punished like this against Canelo. He's taking a lot more punishment in this fight. He's only surviving through, through the holding that he's been allowed to do. The, this is just too much holding, man. Woo, man. It's been it's this is not have been this has not been a competitive competitive fight for a while. You know, this is actually something that you would think they would consider stopping. Plant is telling him to go. Plant's coach is telling him to just go for it. He said he's tired. You got to go for it. Yeah, honestly... This, this, this is a, no, I mean, I'm not saying it has to be stopped, but this is a fight that could have been stopped. I think that round was just, you know, plant might just be done after this fight. All right. So we're in the 11th round, y'all. Plant is just back at the oh big right hand lands for David. Nice left hook from big David Lance. Steve Farhood gave Plant four out of left the first five rounds, but after that is oh a low blow from David. Oh big left hook. Same left hook Canelo land, landed to put uh, Plant down, but Plant took it. Plant tried to block it with his right hand, but it sweeped his chin. Plant's just holding on, man. Plant is, is in this fight because he has done some phenomenal holding in this fight. And I think I'm going to lose my money, man, because if this goes to a decision from Benavides, I don't win. I didn't bet straight up. 
Nice jabs from Benavides. Just landed three jabs in a row. Right hand. Another big right hand from... How is Plant taking his punches? Benavides lands a body shot. Lands up because he's taking too much pump. This fight don't need to continue. This. How do you not stop this? He's just getting his ass... Oh, nah. Come on, ref. Come on now. Come on now, ref. You got to stop the fight, bro. It's over, bro. You're not going to stop this? Yo, stop the fight. Something's going on in the crowd. Stop stop the fight, man. 30 seconds in the 11th round. And, and, and Benavides is still punishing him. And we're getting no response from Plant. All Plant do it is holding a free hand. Whatever, whatever arm Plant is holding... Benavides is hitting him with the other hand. I think Benavides is getting tired of just hitting him. Plant is one tough dude. Oh, God. Oh, my God. I don't know how Plant is still standing. I don't know how Plant is still standing, bro. I don't know how Plant is still standing. He's done after this. This is too much punishment. He's throwing... Yo, I'm going to tell you like this. We're going into the last round. Plant took way more punishment in this fight than he did against Canelo. Took way more punishment. Way more punishment. Way more punishment. It's not ever close. This is too much. This is going to go to the decision. They touched gloves at the last round. Right hand from Benavides. Plant's coming for. I mean, he Plant always starts out with a bunch of jabs. Once Ben Vitas hits him with a good shot, it, it just goes, it's over. Oh, big cook from Ben Vitas again. Plant's fighting, though. He's not holding. Uppercuts on the inside from David. Right hand. Oh, that looked like an elbow a little bit. Yeah. I saw that from Benavides. He threw a right hand, but he threw it like this. He did the Liam Smith. <laughs> Getting some jazz from Benavides. Plant backing up. Another hook from Benavides. Yeah. Oh, nice hook from Plant. That's the hook that knocked out the rail. It landed, but oh, right cross from Benavides catches and hurts Plant, but Plant's still standing. Yeah, this is going to a decision, folks. Benavides is tired. He's not even trying to stop him at this point. Oh, big punch from David. This is such a brutal breather. I mean... I just don't know how David can couldn't put this guy away. And Canelo took him out so easily late. Plant fighting back. 
hook from David. Man. Oh, we caught him with another uppercut, but Plant is still throwing punches. They're both just trading. Oh, my God. Fight's over. It's over. It's over. They gotta respect each other. They respect each other. Yo, Plant got his ass kicked from the eighth to the twelfth round. It was just destruction. They all cool. All right. Oh man, I lost my money. I'm tight. <laughs> oh man. I lost my money, man. I thought Dave was gonna stop him. I get plan credit, but I think that kind of beating changes you. You know, he's not gonna be able to fight at that high level after this. You know what I'm saying? That's just too much punishment. It's too much punishment. This is way too much punishment. You know? And look, I, I, it, wh whoever was here for Ramirez and Colme, I saw some couple of you guys were leaving comments. You know, it's just the timing was just bad, man. That fight was like two rounds ahead of this round. I mean, this fight. I couldn't really give you the proper breakdown of that fight. I mean, uh, commentary. Uh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, I think Plant might have gotten three or four of the first five rounds. You know, um, I scored the first, second, and fourth to Plant. I think the fifth was a swing round. I didn't score for neither, so I, I have that as a draw, as a draw. So Plant, at the very most, could I got four rounds? But I mean, after the fifth. Every round was clear. I think the sixth or seventh was I gave to David, but they were still competitive. But after the eighth, it was just a it was just a beatdown. One sixteen, one fifteen, one thirteen, one sixteen, one twelve. Yeah, okay. Team the one one hundred thirteen or one hundred. Caleb Plant. Imagine. Caleb Plant won. They, they hugging each other to death now. Uh... I want to see Benavides versus Canelo. Yo, there are people already leaving comments under my video. That's crazy. I think plant shit. I don't know, man. I, I mean, you know, I don't know. All right, let's see what he say. I just want to see him call out Canelo. Yeah, Kenny, I'm going to tell y'all, Kenny was terrible tonight, y'all. Kenny was too involved, y'all.
The Canelo fight was a different kind of pressure, you know. The scorecards was 117, 111, 116, 112, 115, 113, all for Benavides. Yeah. I don't know where Andre is, man. I think Andre messed up by not having a belt or being a Mando. You know, technically, it should have been Andre and Ryder. Or Andre for the... He just called out Canelo. Yeah, we got to I want to see the fight, man. I don't want to see the b rematch. Let's get this fight, man. You know, like, who do you guys think wins, bro? Canelo or Benavides? Yeah, we gotta talk about this. We gotta talk about it. Canelo beats David. Canelo points. Canelo definitely is winning the fight, the first half of the fight. It's just, I have a problem with Canelo and when he slowed down, man. That's the one thing I'm worried about. Like early on, Canelo is going to be way more effective than Plant was. And Canelo going to hit him with something that he ain't get hit with before. But if Canelo gasses out, Benavides is going to be all on him, man. That would be a good fight. Yeah, I'm definitely tired. I still got to do a, a review video, a recap video. All right, we're going to talk about this more. Matter of fact, we're going to talk about it the next couple of days. Damn, they taking pictures together and shit now? Damn, bro. All right, I'm cool with all. Oh, I'm good. I'm all good with uh, sportsmanship. All right, y'all. It was real. It was a great, great live, man. Um, I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to do a quick review of the fight. You know, before um, before we we get out of here, I um, mean, before I go go to bed, um, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please on your way out hit the like button for me, please as well. And um, I'll be on here tomorrow. You know, I'm gonna make a quick video now just to recap the fight, and then we could talk more about this tomorrow and and, and Monday as well. All right, I'm sorry for the Ramirez. Uh, commentary. I just couldn't do it because even in between the rounds, I wanted to hear what was being said by the corners. You know, it was just too much going on. This fight was just too much. All right, but um, I'll I'll check you guys in a few minutes, and uh, I'll see you again tomorrow. All right, peace.